value of women and men are equal. Mm -hmm. The responsibilities yeah. break differently. Mm -hmm. It's in that same passage, though, where Paul says, wives submit to your husbands and husbands lay down your life. Mm -hmm. So I think he counted himself well, how much abuse he's covered up in his church for the sake of maintaining the structural integrity of the order of the household. Without having a father in the household, obviously that's going to shape young boys who are growing up. Because sometimes the guy starts standing up and, and leading and the wife's like, whoa, 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 bro. Where have you been for the last year? I've been doing this <laughs> yeah. son. What would your wife say? <laughs> oh, I can't talk about that on this podcast. <laughs> Come on. His middle knee. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to Bros, Bibles, and Beer. This is Jeff. It's episode 231. I'm joined by my brother and Andy and Zach and the pastor from OC Movement, Carrie Robinson. Let's Guys, go. how's it going? Anybody? It's Andy? great. Zach? Uh, hi. Hi, Carrie. <laughs> Zach gets us. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, I did my movement. <laughs> I feel like I didn't get to say my saying. I didn't either. No. Jeff threw us off a little bit. That's that's fine though. I said, guys, you broke the intro because we've got another guy here, back from the dead. That's right, Carrie <laughs> Robinson. Maybe not the dead, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm well alive. Born yeah. again. I did no, just I'm get so... saved after the he gets his commercials. I finally gave my life to the Lord. <laughs> So it's been a good road. It's about oh, time. As you heard, he's going to get us. Yeah, it was skewered is what I did here. Did you see that? Yeah, it was nuts. I don't know if he's wrong, but I thought it was nuts. Oh, so. okay. All right. <laughs> you two believe in barbecue Jesus? I mean, it was just a little intense. I don't know. Is that the same crew as uh, it's Pi only Piper and MacArthur are a part of? I don't even know who that yeah, is. Yeah, they were there too. Shepcon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that sounds about right. ShipCon 2024. I thought it was nuts, but... There were people angry about that. Yeah. Just seeing that little clip. Yeah. And rightfully so, yeah. I think. You mean some of our fans saw that clip and got yes. angry? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of which, do we have uh, some... Can we go to the comments section today? At, we, so, at some point. We, we don't can. have to right now. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's always wonderful... <laughs> there are some good ones. Comments on YouTube, yeah. Uh, one of your friends yeah. I saw... Just because I recognize the name. Yeah. Because he must have been old school YouTube account where he used his real name. Yes. Yeah. Bob Smith. Yeah, that's like YouTube account circa 2010. Yeah, and he is binging and he's feeling it because he is commenting. And we, we love him. I we like love that. that. Yeah. Yeah. He's a friend though. Yeah, old friend. Way back in the day. That's good. Way back in the day, he's definitely deconstructed. I don't know currently where he stands now. He he might have gone further than I've gone, which <laughs> who knew? <laughs> well, he's he just, should just keep start, it up. Just starting to pour new cement. Yeah, keep those that. comments. Uh, Bros Bibles beer, Bros Bibles and beer. You'll find us on YouTube. It's you know you're getting in on the ground floor. We're doing some amazing things, and it's only upward and onward <laughs> from here. So if you want us to see your comments, now is the time to do it. We've talked about it so much. It feels weird if we don't go to the comment section now. I know. <laughs> All right. I know. I'll I'll look some up when uh, when I don't feel like listening to whatever Jeff has for us. <laughs> okay. All I right. do. I want to say thank you for YouTube. It's been great. <laughs> I love watching. It's been awesome. So Harry, keep it up. You encouraged us when we were like kind of thinking about it, and Zach kept pushing. He's like, well, I think we should do this, and you were like, You guys are stupid not to do this. <laughs> And I think and I said Jesus would skewer you. Yeah. You'd be if scared. you didn't. Yeah. If you didn't do it. And we repented. Yep. And <laughs> so skewer I do avoided. Yeah. And I, but I do remember you'd be like, Zach, you're such a good looking man. <laughs> and I love you so much. It's You've got to be on YouTube. <laughs> I probably did say that. That's why I, probably... I, sit, I sit on this side because my dimples over here. <laughs> <laughs> Those aren't the dimples I was talking about, but that's a different story. Uh, different story. I've been doing squats. Mm. No, that's. <laughs> It's been fun, and it's it's cool to see. Uh, I feel like we're getting a different, a totally different audience than we had mm -hmm. before. And uh, yes, doing this is uh, ten times as more complicated. Yeah, like maybe even I'm being uh, conservative, saying it's ten times more complicated. Yeah, but people don't realize the amount of work on the other side of this. No, and speaking on the yeah. other side, we got producer Hello. David Deaton in the house tonight. Double Deaton. Double D. Double Deaton. Yeah, you can Double say Deaton. you can say stuff. If you say it loud enough, it might come through. Hey. There he is. <laughs> There's a hand. There he is. There he is. He made it. That was the hand of God. Yes. So uh, if anything happens tonight, it's David's fault that we don't like. Take the plane. Yeah. If it goes well, it's the Lord. Let's go. That's right. That sounds about right. Yeah. 
I like that logic. Uh, just a, a millisecond of sports trivia. Uh, David, did you ever play soccer at all? False. On? No. Anybody here? No. So nobody knows what the hand of God is. No. Anybody knows who Maradona is? Yes. Is that okay. a play or a player? A handball she into wrote yeah. like the a goal. She it's, wrote like a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a contested, right? Holiday. Win- winning the World Cup. On a handball. On a handball. Yeah. Back in the 60s, 70s, somewhere. Eh. I don't know. I don't I mean, even know if he game. knew. He was on yeah. cocaine a lot. So that'll do it. Maradona, one of the greatest soccer players of all time. Yeah. Yeah. And good hands. <laughs> An incredible 80s pop singer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Back when everybody was hairy and unkempt. And a virgin. Sure. Well, she's like a virgin. Yeah. It's like similar. Somebody, anyway, okay. Virgin, so, virgin adjacent. So Jeff walks in <laughs> to the <laughs> show tonight, full, full beautiful mind. <laughs> There's scribbles. Like, if we would have had a, a board up behind here, there would be red string <laughs> and tacks going to different places. With, That's right. With, He's unlocked the seventh seal in Revelation, <laughs> I believe, is what this is. Yeah. yeah. Locusts got to all yeah. of my notes, and I had to write them on napkins. Yeah. So you're writing on napkins. Uh, what? And uh, yeah, this, yes. So who for, knows what we're going to get? Yeah. But we are going to start off with. Um, with torturing our guest. I mean, that is a that's a thing we need Sounds to do. Good. This is my rapid fire for for you. Let's go. Rapid fire Q and A. <laughs> rapid fire Q and A, and I'm. You never know what <laughs> what would happen or what will happen. There's a lot of there's a lot of questions here. Um. Anyway, are you ready? Sure. Let's do ready. it. Ready. Uh, I'd say start the timer. We don't have. <laughs> there's no timer. <laughs> okay. Just be rapid. Here we go. Uh. What. Yes, be rapid. Jeez. Sorry. <laughs> Would Christ be a Crocs guy today? A Crocs guy? I think so. That's nice. I think so. Did Christ have a secret girlfriend? No. Are you sure? Positive. Wasn't Polly? Stephanie? No, I, he did not have a secret girlfriend. Okay. <laughs> Mary Magdalene, that's what <laughs> they say. I think Zach believes he was married. When Jesus know. played... When- <laughs> You do listen. I do. It yeah. was a joke, but yeah, to, yeah. you know, to I, the church. I watched Da Vinci Code. When Jesus played <laughs> soccer, was he a Nike guy or an Adidas guy? Oh gosh, I would say Nike. He's oh, right. Jewish. Adidas is German, dude. <laughs> what Get is out. It, what does Adidas stand for? All day I dream about soccer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> nice. Well done. Yeah. What what's your most manly quality? My calf muscles, yeah, for sure, a hundred percent. You can't <laughs> teach those calves. <laughs> what would your wife say? Oh, I can't talk about that on this podcast. <laughs> Come on, his middle knee. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh my god! What? This, I've never heard that in my life. <laughs> what? I've never heard that. What? You didn't go to junior high? I apparently <laughs> missed it. Does your wife sit in the back of the car when you drive? No. Why not? It's uh, <laughs> a great question. I thought you were a leader, Carrie. <laughs> Driving Miss Daisy. Okay. Uh, greatest superstition. I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> greatest superstition. You would like to go, I feel to, like the, go to the Taco Bell with me. You're Morgan Freeman, like, gives birth to Jordan Peterson if you go Megan, long enough. Oh my gosh. Megan Robinson was a good friend of mine, <laughs> and she appreciated a. <laughs> Chorito. Send Wahataneo. <laughs> See, oh she would go and get to Mexico. What was your food? question? I missed it. The Doing last one. Morgan Freeman. What was your greatest question? <laughs> is hard. And sometimes you need a lobster to understand. My good friend. The it's, that's like a Jordan Peterson Jordan, Kermit the Frog. That's all I do. I Kermit. like it. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. I'm going to pee my pants. All right. I missed the last question. Greatest superstition. Oh, man. I don't. I'm not superstitious. What about I'm a little Stevie stitious. Wonder? What about with the. What, what, just a little I'm stitious. a little stitious. What about with like the Cowboys? No, I don't. I, I've tried to, to stick to one. It never works. You okay. just lose. He's okay. A Christian. Based off superstition, have you ever preached without underwear? To all, every, day, every chance I get. You're every chance I get. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to do a little bit tonight. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever adjusted on stage? Oh yeah, for sure. That, I just that yeah. on a whim. Uh, have you ever winged a sermon? Yes, not as a lead pastor, as a youth pastor. Okay. Yeah, uh, but I have definitely played the, the hits. No, I was on a ch- pastor's trip. It was the whole week, and I was preaching that Sunday and had nothing. And my buddy gave me his message on the flight home. I made it my own and preached it and crushed it. It was so good. Yeah. <laughs> 
three kids turned away from the Lord that day. <laughs> <laughs> I was one of them. <laughs> that was the day the deconstruction began. <laughs> yeah, a kid in the background is yeah. like, I thought I knew, but maybe I don't. <laughs> Carrie planted his deconstructive seed in me. <laughs> Gross. With my third what? knee. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. What do you get? <laughs> this podcast has never been more bro y than oh my the last gosh. five minutes. Why does Easter matter? Uh, the resurrection. Do you think the Easter bunny cares? No. <laughs> uh, well,. Do you think the Easter bunnies have a jumping for Jesus day? I don't believe in the Easter bunny. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's a prerequisite. Uh, Hold on. Jeff starts flipping through. Uh, I guess I should get rid of all these my, Easter bunny questions. <laughs> and yeah, the, the follow-ups. Uh, get some scorcho uh, sauce uh, on that question. I, 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 that's all of our questions. Who, yeah. who was the uh, the Trump uh, press secretary? She'd like flip to the page. And like, you've asked the question, and now I will now yeah, go to page 127. Kaylee, yeah, Kaylee, Kaylee McEnany. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, why do the bunnies call Satan jump for Jesus? Oh, no. Forget it. <laughs> Sorry, that was one of my throwaway questions. If Joel Osteen... <laughs> Was your cousin? Joel would Steve. you kiss him? No, I wouldn't. No. <laughs> Do you think Joel was spanked or slapped in the face? Oh, he was definitely spanked okay. for sure. Okay. Why yeah. is that? Why I do think you say there that? might have been a switch or two. Oh yeah, for sure. But that's the generation I I was hit with a switch all the time. Belt switch. Did they make you get it? Oh yeah, go, for get, sure. Go get me a switch. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, my family had a. Can you give me a, a an impression? Made a, an oak paddle that a handle it was like sanded down and hung on the back of the pantry door. Yeah. Oh man, that's yeah. like you know, dazed and confused. Yeah, not not as wide, okay. but the same length. Wait, this is how you were disciplined? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. That was my follow up. This question. explains wow. so much. Yeah. That's amazing. I'm a proponent for spanking. Okay. Well, would you rather be? Uh, yes, sir. Carrie's yes. Like, yes. Carrie's like, I got a hankering <laughs> for some spankering. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> if you were going to be disciplined yeah. by one of three people, my wife. I don't know you where you cheated. I don't you know looked where at the answer go. key. I'm not gonna hit. You, you, <laughs> Zach is a close second. He's, He's a close <laughs> second. That's right. It, it, it was Jesus, okay. you that your universal. wife, or the odd guy at your church. I still choose my wife. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, spatula or belt? Oh, spatula. Yeah. Spatula. You've obviously Why? never been spanked with a belt before. Okay. Have yeah. you ever had your mouth? Um, <laughs> Yes. Cleaned out with soap. Boy, you got a pretty mouth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Liquid soap. Why? Liquid soap. Why? Liquid soap for saying the word shoot. Shoot? S-H-O-O-T. Actually shoot. Yeah. You're not self-editing. What? What? Oh, like a no. gun. Like shoot. Now, in the context is my I'm parents- I'm going to shoot you in the face, my mom. Parents said, my mom said, do not say that word. It's too close. And I said it two more times that day. So the context you is I was being her. disobedient to her with that more than the actual- yeah, nature of the word. That's some bullshit. <laughs> some bullshit. That's some bullshit. Let's talk about that. Let's do that. That's a good convo. Okay. At okay. What a- oh, sorry. At what age was your first kiss? Uh, sixteen to my wife. Oh shoot. Yeah. I was gonna say, and with a girl. Watch your no. mouth. With a girl and everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is G- she sorry. identified as a woman back then? So yes. Uh, if Jesus, <laughs> oh, there's a can of worms. <laughs> I know she's young. But- <laughs> If Jesus was uh, a Bible reader, what would be the quote he pulled out of the Bible? Oh, gosh. Uh, perfect love casts out all fear in out of context like Zach used it on your last podcast. 100%. <laughs> and what is your favorite verse? <laughs> uh, Romans 8.28. And that is? Uh, if we know in all things God works together for the good of those who love him called according to his purpose. Amen. Thank you for letting me torment you. That was great. Yay! Right. That was Insert good. Cheering sounds right here. <laughs> That's right. That's where we go. You made cheers. it through. Oh, cheers, everybody. Congratulations. Cheers, 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 cheers. Pre-cheers. Cheers. Pre-cheers. Pre-cheers. Before the cheers, pre-cheers. All right, I got a brewery, brewery rest. Uh, this is their Pilsner. What is it? Let's see what I got here. Hold on, sorry. I moved my microphone. Let me get it back here. Yeah, the pills. The- it's the Pop Fuji. Pop Fuji. Filtered, fil- unfiltered Pilsner. It's a new one I haven't seen. Pop Fuji. Fuji's and Funyuns. <clears throat> Fellowship and Funk. I got a docent hourglass. Name that, by the way. Oh, they put that in cans now? Nice. It's in cans. Purple you know what that is? Huh? Purple Hell yeah. Purple onion. He knows. Zach Galifianakis. Oh, nice. His let's go. stand up at the Purple Onion. It's where he, he has a scene where he plays his brother. <laughs> and his brother talks like this. He said, 
only thing me and my, my brother had in common was the Fugees. <laughs> is that what? the influence for the character he plays in that movie with uh, Will Ferrell when they're politicians? Uh, uh, maybe. I don't know which one that is. I don't I forget the name of it, but he talks just like that the entire movie. Yeah, that's probably. Oh, this is good. I like this. All right. Mm. They do um, good stuff. I have uh, Brothers Bond. I think that's the leftover from last Oh, I time. did give you Brothers Bond. Yep. Yes. Yes. Yep. I got some Basil Hayden. Basil. Always clutch. Excellent. Basil. Well, men, I've gathered you here today. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. No, we have, we have, uh, there's something that's going on in the world, in our society and culture, and uh, it revolves around the attack on, on men in general. And uh, the attack on the church, the, cha- the attack on the patriarchy and male leadership. And, and so we, we've kicked this around a little bit before, but, uh, you know, I, just off the top of your head, uh, Carrie and you guys, um, what are your thoughts on what's going on in society in, in terms of leadership and church and, and just the whole ball of wax. That feels like it's too broad. Let's narrow it a little bit. <laughs> let, let, what do you think about <laughs> stuff? I just want his general, I want the general comments Red on just sure. like what happened to men <laughs> I've, as I've asked some people before. Yeah, that's a great question and very, very vague and big. Um, men in the church, men in marriage. Yeah. I mean, do y'all want me to, I'll just, I'll share what I'm thinking and we'll see where it takes us. All right. Um, that's I, what we do. I do think that Progressively, since 60s and 70s, there's been a decline in uh, the leadership role of men, specifically in the household and in church. And I think that it has become a detriment to our culture and society. What I don't mean by that is that there should be a surge of masculinity that becomes misogyny or toxic masculinity. Nobody wants that. No, but I do believe that word is thrown around a lot, that phrase. And I do think that that men have abdicated their role in the house and in the church, specifically as women have begun to step up more emphatically in home and in the church, which I don't think that that is a bad thing, that women are taking assertive roles uh, of moving the ball forward. But I do think that it's come, that, that men have been like, oh, okay, cool, we we can step back. We will. I think that's been a subconscious thing and a generational thing that we're seeing now. Gosh, the tail end of the boomers, specifically Gen X and elder millennials. And so, I mean, I could dive deeper into well, what I think about that. Just to follow up, what you mentioned a ball, what ball are they moving forward? Uh, you know, you talk about, I don't know, how do you want to, I would say Judeo Christian values and principles. Mm-hmm. So that to me would be, we talk about, when I talk about the home or the church, I'm not talking about, the home within a secular society. I'm talking about specifically within a home that is a Christ-centered home. So I, that would be what I would be referring to mostly. But I do think it's it's bled into the world in general. I just think that as the church, we're supposed to be setting the standard. And I don't know that that standard is being set in the best way possible. I do think it's shifting now. Do you think the church has been chasing the world a bit in the last five years or the other way around? No, I don't actually. I think that the last, I think COVID changed a lot. I think that I'm seeing a surge of people saying, well, we're actually going to start standing for some stuff that we used to kind of roll over on in, in under the, the, the headline of being an attractional church or a seeker sensitive church. Yeah. And so I think that that shifted at COVID, the, the batshit craziness of, mm. are we allowed to say that? Yeah. The bat shoot craziness. Bat shoot crazy. Yeah. The soap's coming. Uh, well, I did, I'm allowed to, I won't get a switch pulled on me, but it's just, <laughs> What's going to happen to you is the question. Well, my mom won't listen to this because it has beer in the title. So that's right. <laughs> it's funny. I I use a quick side note. I use a AI helper with like keywords and stuff for YouTube, and and it highlights potentially problematic keywords, and that's the one that's always there. Every, beer, beer, yeah, huh. potentially problematic. But yeah, I disagree. What do you disagree with? Uh, that beer is problematic. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff is ready to fight. No, I'm not ready to fight. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I, I'm going to just kind of wait and see how this develops. One thing I thought of as I continue to talk. <laughs> I'm going to wait and see. But anyway, anywho. You can't help yourself. Like in a relationship when uh, 
if you got a just kind of a loser guy that's not doing responsibilities that he should be, you mentioned women stepping up to fill gaps. Like that's just a small example of like you could see like the relationship might not be healthy. It's not ideal. It's not flowing like it should, but somebody is stepping up to fill a gap and there's a version that goes the other way. And so there is a little bit of some of this is like from feminism and uh, mm-hmm. from from the sixties. Like there was like there's these big pushes because, which is birthed out of a long time of women not having the same rights and privileges that men did, and so there's pendulum swings. They and- didn't get to go to war. This is God. True. If we could just get all of our mothers and daughters and sisters. <clears throat> On the front lines. That would be just so fantastic. It wasn't just the feminist movement, though. It was also the sexual revolution, which said we can have sex with whomever we want to, whenever we want to, with no consequences. Birth control, access Abortion. to birth control. Yeah. So then it be, you, you, men no longer had to woo women. So it all, like, we're going to know we could do whatever we want to do. So that the chivalry slowly began to die. And again, there's negative parts of that as well. But it slowly began to die. Women said, no, we are equal, which I don't even think that's a biblical i think in intrinsic value humans are equal but i don't think anywhere in scripture do we see god say i should treat jeff as an equal no the scripture says that i should do everything to help him become Mm -hmm. the greatest version of himself to be a servant to him and so this whole equality thing which may be some good let's just stick on the word equality i'm sure people will love that i think that is where the shift began to take place and men were like, cool, yeah, totally, you you are, let's go. And women began to step up and lead in, in arenas that really they didn't have to or need to, not that they couldn't or shouldn't. Like sideline reporters at NFL games? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Two for two, bro. That's impressive tonight. That's the one. The same thing. And so anyways, I just, uh, yeah, I think that that's the, the shift slowly started taking place. And men started stopped leading spiritually in the homes. Men stopped taking the initiative on being the the moral compass for their house, setting the moral thermometer, if you will, a thermostat. And they stopped taking initiative by saying, "Hey, no, this is what's right for our home. This is how we're going to move forward." Not, and I just think that was a slow shift that took place. What would you say to the person? who asks you and right now it's me i'm the one who's asking okay, you cool. <laughs> what would you say to me uh well like give me an example what where where have you seen this yeah what? i think uh, probably the biggest one that i've seen name some names okay <laughs> i think that obviously i'm not uh, by any stretch of the imagination an expert on this but i the biggest thing i've seen is in the church i think that men stopped being spiritual leaders in their homes which is the biggest as a pastor, that's the biggest contention that we deal with first with just about every marriage counseling scenario we would find ourselves in. So as a pastor, mm-hmm. in, in, ch- in your personal encounters in the church scenario, mm-hmm. you're seeing this trend that's not been heading in the right direction for some years. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, to, I'm 24 years into this now. Yeah. And it the, the primary spiritual leader generally speaking, has been women. Yeah. There are more women volunteering in the church than there are men. But when you look at the statistics, I know you have listeners that are all around, so I don't know if y'all want to talk about church or not, but mm-hmm. when you look at statistics, there is a statistic that says if a child comes to church by themselves, there is a 13 or 15% chance that they'll stay in the church when they get to college. If they come to church with their mom, there's a 55% chance that they'll stay in the church when they get to college. And if they come to church with their dad, it's in the 90s. Really? 100%. No, 90%. Yeah. 90%. I know you love that. Sorry. <laughs> Mileage may vary, but uh, it's in. It's like 95% that they'll stay wow. connected in the church. There's a direct correlation hmm. to when men are setting the, the standard. It doesn't mean that they have to know more Bible verses or pray better prayers. It just means that in our home, we know that dad has established this is part of who we are. He's prioritized it for the family. Yeah. yeah. And most of the women that we have, most couples, it's the the wife will say, I just want my husband to be the spiritual leader. So I started asking, what do you mean by that? Mm-hmm. Does that mean he has to have more scripture memorized, you know, whatever? And the main thing is they just wanted the guy to take initiative. Mm-hmm. That he's the one who says, no, we're going to church today. That he's the one who says, hey, we're going to pray about that. 
that he's the one that says, hey, yeah. this isn't how we behave because this, this is what we believe about that. That's meeting his wife's desires. Yeah. Like, I just want that. Yeah. And if my husband will do that for our family, then I'm all in. Yeah. Yeah. And and it doesn't always, it's not always met because sometimes the guy starts standing up and, and leading and the wife's like, whoa, 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 bro. Where have you been for the I've last been doing this for <laughs> yeah. Years, yeah. son? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you can't all of a sudden come out and oh, now now I got the bull by the reins, uh grab the deer by well, the horns. That, I mean that that happened with Run my that, bull. that happened with my wife and I, where she, she, I could I got into some you know, Christ and I'm like, Okay, I'm moving forward and and she didn't like that. Yeah. It wasn't that she didn't like that I I had become a believer. It was that she didn't like that I don't, I haven't trusted you, and mm -hmm. and now we're doing this, mm -hmm. and it took time. It took like I want to like, I'm, I'm. She even, I mean, like darts. Well, you probably did it wrong at first. And, well, just no. I don't think so. Just darts coming at me, like, yeah. I don't. Are, are you real? Yeah. Are you real? Are you real? Because if just testing because you. I'll, I'll yeah, I'll I'll find out if there's yeah. I'll I'll find the holes in this, and and then I think eventually. You know, there was a great uh, synergy between us and a realization that, like, no, we're we're all in. Mm. We're all in on family. We're all in. I'm I'm gonna lead, and I love you, and and I know you love me, and I know this is. We both know this is what is good for us, and will strengthen us. That makes sense. Test. She's testing. She was she was making sure it's the real deal. One hundred percent. Ninety percent. I was also wondering about this though that there there has been a correlation between um an increase in single moms mm -hmm. as well and uh without having a a father in the household uh obviously that's going to shape young boys who are growing up mm -hmm. and they're they're missing that type of uh input in their lives mm -hmm. that has to be playing a role too totally but i think that's all the more reason why the when we have men in I'm trying not to keep giving disclaimers in, in the church. They that are healthy, they've got to be leading effectively because th something has to turn the tide, yeah. and and it, it won't. It will only that tide specifically will only be turned by godly men leading the way that godly men should. What does that mean? That's a great question. I think it's kind of what we're talking about. But I, I I think I think take taking the initiative. Leading like pri okay for me prioritizing church, prioritizing that our life is centered around God's purpose and plan for us, and that's our north star that we come back to, and not what everything else, all the auxiliary things in life. Okay, let me give you a case in point for for our family, um, and this is a decision Megan and I, my wife and I, have landed on. And, and if you, <laughs> when I talk about this, a lot of people think that I'm some hardcore misogynist. But you just don't know my wife. And I'll now, be the judge. We'll see <laughs> how strong she is. So, uh, it's, but I require her to be barefoot <laughs> when she's yeah, in the kitchen. I require her to wear a head wrap. <laughs> but uh, for instance, we, my daughter plays club volleyball, and uh, the same club that I believe your daughter plays in, mm. I believe, or used to, maybe used to. Okay, sorry. Well, we can't be friends now anymore. But um, <laughs> so practices are are three times a week plus tournaments. And, uh, and so she has students on Tuesdays and we are, our family motto is we serve God, honor all, finish strong and always build his church. And that is who we are as a family. So that means if practice falls on Tuesday, we're going to go talk to your coach and say, Hey, uh, listen, this is church is a priority, et cetera, et cetera. Can she miss practice on Tuesdays? And if he says no, the next one is, can she miss two a month? And if he says no, then we go, I'm sorry, this club isn't for us. Because in our home, we're always going to be a part of the church because that is a priority over everything else. Everything else is auxiliary and ancillary to that. And so when I lead the charge with that and not just sitting back quietly letting my wife do that, what I'm actually doing for my daughter is establishing a sense of identity found in Christ. Now, we do that together. We, we had the conversation behind scenes. Yeah. Is this right for our family? She has tournaments on weekends. They're every six weeks. So whoever in my home is not preaching is at her tournament because we still value the sports. Sure. Does that make because sense? Because you and your wife both pastor your church. Correct. In yeah. case people don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so I don't know if that's a good specific, that's but allowing no, it's, that it's to a perfect. Lead. I love the personal 
anecdote. It's it's a good example. Well, and it was alluded to a little bit earlier today too, but the the way that service and serving looks, how that looks in terms of leadership as well, and how we as men are serving our wives and our families uh, in the in those ways too. I think that's that's uh, a really healthy characteristic of a good leader, and that and so that doesn't always look like um, I've got the megaphone in the front of yeah. the uh, of the right. parade. That's it, sometimes the worst thing to do. Yeah, is is the top down power over approach to leadership. I think yes, that's a lot of people assume that's leadership. But what my that was my other question is like, what about different leadership styles? Is there a way to be dialed in, checked in, care about the family, the direction it's headed, but there's just a different style, or maybe you're passionate about things in a way that's different from your wife. That's a great question. Why don't you give a specific? Um. Uh, well, that's a great question. Why don't you give us spe- more specific? I kidding. guess Jeff, it's time for us to say that's a great question. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's your doing turn. It. I, 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 I mean, ultimately, all we're talking about here is the patriarchy and leadership. And the word patriarchy, though, is such a trigger word that you're going to lose people. We'll, we'll get to that. Okay. Well, um, Jeff likes it. He embraces it. Okay. Yes. Um, and that's just- the problem. We have an assault on that. Sure. Men are ashamed to lead. They're ashamed to be the headship of their family. They're ashamed to put themselves out there. They're ashamed to speak up. And they've stopped doing that. And that's why, you know, we have these problems in society. Hold, hold on. Hold on. Okay. So you just declared a lot of broad <laughs> things very dogmatically. Just the Bible. Men are. That's, even, the- that's even less clear. <laughs> now I really don't know what you're talking about. Um, okay. Well. I, I could I'll pl- let me play a clip on what Planets. the what the assault what the assault is um, on from <laughs> from organizations on the patriarchy like just the idea of like women submit like in society that's like that's a bad word patriarchy bad word everything is under assault everything within the Bible is under attack. Correct. What do that you think? Correct. What? Why don't you give us your um, definition of patriarchy? Hold on, David. Can you play that? That clip, right after he gives us the definition of patriarchy, <laughs> David. Don't you dare play that clip. No, <laughs> play it. Everyone's shirt. Wait, everyone's a man here. Who's the uh, leader? On. We, yeah, we both of us can't submit. Um, David, play this because I just wanted. This is just on the attack I'm on lay patriarchy. Down my life. Here we go. Just like Jesus did for the church. <laughs> Thank you. They, oh, stop it the for cal- a moment. So this is a uh, Vody Bachman. This is at a mission conference. Um, and he's talking about um, just the battles that we we have in society. Just starting with wives submit to your husband. There's a battle right there. I can just stop right there, and we can talk right. about the battle and, and so on and patriarchy. So, go ahead and and play this. This is the organizations that are going against um, okay men in general. Hit it, Dave. And Cain has to submit to sin's desire. Okay, here we go. Is he drunk? Just kidding. <laughs> the Council on Biblical Equality. Sounds like a good thing, right? Listen to their statement here. Point number one. Scripture is our authoritative guide for faith, life, and practice. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I want to get my amen there because it's downhill from here. <laughs> Two, patriarchy, and then in parentheses, male dominance, right? So they have to redefine patriarchy, right? Patriarchy means male leadership, male headship. Patriarchy, patriarchal cultures, right? Men are the heads of their their family. Um, you, 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 You define people's lineage. Yeah, through that that male lineage, that male headship, that that's patriarchy. They say patriarchy, male dominance in parentheses, is not a biblical ideal, but a result of sin. Patriarchy is not a biblical ideal, but a result of sin. And again, they're defining patriarchy as male dominance. Patriarchy is an abuse of power, taking from females what God has given them, their dignity and freedom, their leadership, and even their lives. Yes, one more example here. How about that? 
Listen to this from the United Nations. The family is an institution that has historically been a stronghold of patriarchy and embodied men's social power and domination over women. Patriarchy in its wider definition means the manifestation and institutionalization of male dominance over women and children in the family and the extension of male dominance over women in society in general. That's how they're defining patriarchy. You can stop there. This is the attack. Yeah. And, and this isn't, I mean, United Nations is, has massive implications to worldly things. And, and there are hundreds, probably thousands of organizations that are just fighting against men in general and their leadership. So can we talk about his definition of patriarchy real quick? I don't think those were his. No, those weren't his. He was reading that. Can we, the ones that he gave. Those were. Can we talk about the ones that he gave, right? Sure. Okay. So is, is that the definition that you hold? The ones that he gave there? Is that? No. No. No, I don't think that's that, <coughs> Bodie's either. I think he's reading three definitions, right? I, I know it's not his. I'm, okay. I'm okay. being a little bit like, I'm not trying to set a trap, but, <laughs> but what I'm, what I am trying to point out here is that Lay clearly it. we have different definitions of the word patriarchy there it is what you were i think what you were hinting at carrie when you said people are going oh people are going to get uh, a little triggered by this yeah. is because the most common definition right now is not a positive one no correct it is not one of honoring and uh loving leadership it is one of what he just described so he described what three different major worldwide organizations that describe it yeah the, they use that term so maybe but why Maybe are they doing that? Because they're they're choosing to use a word to describe bad behavior. They're trying to dismantle the church. They're trying to dismantle society. <laughs> so far, well, I've gotten no evidence of that. That's just an assertion. A but you don't assertion. So so hold on, hold on, real quick though. Let me finish the juicy. let me finish the thought there because they gave a definition. I think we all heard that when we went and and the definition that they gave of of patriarchy doesn't sound good if someone described yeah. me that way i would be like right no i no. don't i don't like that yeah so in some ways we would say yes we agree with those definitions of patriarchy as being negative correct, correct. so we Agreed. either we then if we want to describe <laughs> healthy male leadership either need to use a different word or we need to provide a different definition for that word well david go to hold, hold hold, hold, but just go to 2544 and then we'll we'll get there go ahead I, because this is the definition of patriarchy. I want to. So what I like about that, Andy, is is like definitions matter, and so under that working definition, we would all agree. Like in my mind, the word patriarchy isn't triggering in the sense that a lot of people use it. Yeah. Um. Today, like that, like whatever hashtag fuck the patriarchy, whatever movements have sprung up trying to fight battles. Yeah. Um. Often for good reasons. Um though maybe misguided and the pendulum swings too far. It's like, I, I like your reframing of it. It's like, okay, go with that definition. Is that, if that is the way patriarchy is, is that good or bad? And what do we think about that? As a, I, I mean, I'm just trying to like set aside the word itself. We're all sitting here going, yes, we agree. What they just described there is bad. So then what are we arguing about? What, what is our difference? Is it because they're using a word in a different way that we didn't like, but, but, but the underlying meaning of the thing we all agree on, hey, we don't, all of us, it, us in this room, and what was described there is, yeah, male domination and subjugation of women and children doesn't sound like a good thing. That doesn't sound like good leadership. No, but that's not what patriarchy is. That is not, that is not what, that is not what male leadership is in the church, in family, biblically, like, like a biblical worldview. That is not the definition of it. Yeah, probably all. in its rawest definition, patriarchy would mean male leadership, just like matriarchy would mean female, female leadership. leadership. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't look that up. I feel like I'm pretty close. That's pretty close. In in its rawest form. Right. And so th my, my point is like, why would we, why should we get all up in arms about a, a, a definition when the spirit of the, when the spirit of the position is the same? Like who cares? Tomato, tomato, almost literally tomato, tomato. They called it patriarchy. We call it abusive male leadership. 
No, 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 no. But those two things are not the same. Well, you didn't disagree. You didn't disagree with the that what they described was negative. So, I said, let me show you what why we're like under. That, he doesn't like that definition. Let me show you why we're under I'm, attack. I'm like, I don't care what the definition is. Just look at the behavior. We don't like. We all agree that we don't like the behavior. So why are we hung up on the definition? Yeah, what is it you're trying to say, Jeff? That you needs to be to come back or be. Do you want to reclaim the word or the definition? I, I think patriarchy is. I think it is important that we that us as as husbands are leading well and lead well love well guide your children well bring the gospel to your family live it out yeah but when you look at what where we're under attack who's attacking us it's constant on the phones on television on the radio whatever it might be it's constant it doesn't stop and it's eating away and we have to be a, it, just to be aware be aware that this is going on because slowly things are have been eroding if you're leading well like you described then what he just described doesn't apply to you correct but helping so then why are you worried aren't we meant to go and make the best version of of others what what's stopping you they want you to make the best version of others too well there's people listening i would hope and we would be sharing that that you know let's make sure that we're aware this is going on and if you just think this isn't going on it's happening if you're now afraid to lead as a man and and to say let's i've got this and i get what you're saying i don't think your clip proved that point but i get what you're that, saying that clip was not to prove a point the next clip is to prove a point <laughs> okay <laughs> do right. you guys do you guys remember the Gillette ad that got a lot of heat when they did the toxic masculinity ad. I didn't yeah, have this pulled up. Vaguely, we play, vaguely. Where it just it shows a guy like man explaining like when in an office setting a woman starts to talk and then the the guy's like what she means is and he talks over her. It shows yeah. a bunch of examples. There's a guy that kind of I think he slaps a girl in the ass or something like that, and it it received a ton of heat because there is there is this sensitivity like there there is a change. I don't disagree, Jeff, in that. There has been a change in the way um, men are perceived for a long time. The sitcom dad has just been the doofus yeah, punching bag. Absolutely. Yep. That's not new at all. And so some of that stuff has been ramping up in a way that's like, my family knows I hate sit sitcom dad. And I know guys that are sitcom dad. Um, yeah. And part, that part of it gets absorbed through culture. Oh, this is acceptable now without even thinking about <laughs> it. And so I, I'm, I'm with you sort of on, on that that front like there there is that um but people freaked out when it said toxic masculinity people on the more on the right just to generalize tried to cancel gillette there was that movement because they said they they were saying oh masculinity is toxic and it's like i didn't read that at all it's like they're saying no don't be a, don't be a dick like there is a version of masculinity that can be toxic they weren't saying all of toxic masculinity is wrong i think sometimes in this when we you mean all of masculinity is not wrong right so you said all of toxic masculinity is not wrong oh <laughs> i blame dyslexia um the other day my daughter shared a video from a ted talk about dyslexia i'm like what is she trying to tell me check this out dad you might learn something um but people took it as like being masculine is toxic def i think that's how people yes. received it the commercial was just saying, "Don't be a dick." Yeah, is, is how I interpreted it. But when we're when we are engaged in a culture war, you ha there has to be one side or the other. There's not room for the nuance, and so it became another like can't yeah, but take sides thing. Even just the nature of the commercial, I didn't see it, so maybe I shouldn't even speak about it. But I, maybe I shouldn't even have brought it up because we didn't have it prepared. To <laughs> Terry's show. a shick man. I'm, I'm a shick man. Dollar shave club. Get your shick together. Um, the, the commercial itself, though, it didn't build up masculinity. It tore down masculinity. So there was no redeeming quality to it. And there's no way you can pull from that. There's a better way to be. All you can pull from that is don't be this way. And that way would be masculinity. And so that has been, I mean, you think about the shift like you talked about in, in um, sitcoms. The show used to be Father Knows Best. And leave it to Beaver, and it was mom and dad talking with the boys, yeah. 
And then Tim, the tool man, Taylor broke everything and thank God for Wilson and his wife. Cause they actually saved the day every day. <laughs> Same with, you know, Bob Saget. He, it was, oh, it, and it wasn't uncle Jesse and it was, it was always the kids and yeah, the dads are always the doofus. So, so I, I don't think that I, I don't actually think that there is just a, an all out and maybe you're not even arguing this, but there's not this thing of, Hey, be a better version of a man. It's just, don't be a man because masculinity is the problem. That is, that is the current cultural thought. That's the pervasive thought right now. Yeah. That, that is a message. It's not hard. It's not hard to find that message. No. And the problem is that's not the biblical worldview. We need masculinity. We need strong men who are leaders of families and churches around the country, or we die as a society. Church dies. Everything dies. Family dies. It just gets torn apart. Well, it can't die because the gates of hell cannot prevail against it, Jeff, but I see where you're going with this. Uh, don't you feel like... That was a rip and a compliment at the same time. Don't you feel time. like, though, that everything we've seen in the last 60 years in America has been a response? Well, Jeff's seen that. I haven't seen it that long. <laughs> right, fair. It's a response. So the the response to like equal pay for women, great. Uh, like the whole voting thing, I'm for it, right? Like all that stuff is good, but the pendulum has swung so far. So the question is, how do we, as as godly men, the three of us, not you, but the rest of, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah. How do we, as godly men, there it is. See, I had to do it. You I got to gotta get in there. How do we set the tone without swinging the pendulum ourselves, right? Because that's, I love that. that I think is the bigger challenge because I think all of the world is waiting for us to be like, just say that wrong thing and so that we can crucify you and your message will never well, be heard. Well, and part of the message of uh, equality, I think the underlying message in that is uh, uniformity. And, and maybe that's the mistake that gets made here is that it's not, uh, yes, men and women can be equal, but that doesn't mean we're uniform. We're not right. the same. Right. And so there's a version. What we need to look at is what is healthy masculine leadership look like in the family? What does healthy uh, feminine leadership look like in the family? How do these things, are, are they supposed to coexist? There is an area of overlap and then there's, an, it's the Venn diagram, right? Mm-hmm. There's unique areas and areas of overlap. We will parent together, but we don't parent the same, right? Yeah. And there are areas that, that the man will take and own protection of the family, security, et cetera. I'm picking easy ones. And then there is the the feminine side where it's, it's nurturing and and growing kids in in those kinds of ways i'm purposely choosing really easy ones sure but um that's important to remember that no matter where any of us are on this uh spectrum and uh, you know argument discussion it's like there are innate gifts that people have and general differences between men and women on average yeah like so, nobody's and that, so that's that. that's the conflation that i think that happens is like oh well uh, because we're equal, that means we we can do all the same things, right? All to the same degree. And, and then, no, we can't. The no, w- is the word you were avoiding using earlier? I think was equity. I think you almost said the word equity, which is a trigger word. I definitely wasn't trying to say equity, but okay. yes, because I think that's what you're touching on. Is like the way equity is used sometimes is we need to make sure everything is equitable and like just make sure it gets there and like with no regard or little regard to how things actually function and the way you might create a snowball effect or a chain reaction that isn't always good. Like forcing things to be so where they literally can't be so um, yeah. is a fool's errand. So I think that's versus a, equality, like I think that's a part of it. I'm just, I, I'm just uh, men and women being the best versions of themselves in the sweet spot. Hey, this is we are different creatures. We are wired differently. We encounter the world differently. True. And so that's why a marriage is like the perfect combination and why kids thrive in full married families is because they get the full spectrum of, of leadership and perspective and worldview. And, and they get two different parents who are doing different things again with the Venn diagram of overlap. That's the healthiest version yeah. So, so men should not try to be like women. Women should not try to be like men with the understanding, again, that we have some shared stuff in the middle. I feel like there's some tension brewing 
I feel like Jeff is feeling something and you're feeling something and I want to try to dig deeper to that. I don't know if that's real or not. But when you say that, can we drill it one layer deeper because it's a little, still a little vague, I think. Are you saying that it doesn't matter if the, the wife makes more money than the, the husband does? That's irrelevant. We're building the same home together. It doesn't matter if you know the husband is the guy who does the laundry and cooks the food and the wife mows the lawn. Is that what you're talking about? When you say the roles that they play, I was just trying to get some clarity from you on that. No, I intentionally chose the easy ones, which is like okay. if someone breaks into the house, naturally, I'm, I'm I should be the one mm-hmm. who's stepping up to protect the family. Naturally, right. you're stronger. Yeah, all things. D- 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 yeah, and probably without even thinking, you're gonna do you're that. gonna do that, and your wife is gonna go make sure the kids are safe. Mm-hmm. Right, without thinking. Right, generally. Generally speaking, it's good order. Unless there's somebody. Unless like the person is coming into the house closest to your wife and there's not the time, whatever we're creating. A weird scenario. <laughs> and like for some color, reason, I was drugged. What color shirt is he? Is he assailant wearing? If you are tied Ooh. up, if you are caught in a sex wing and you literally can't get out, <laughs> then your wife's just supposed to wait. <laughs> um, I don't believe that there are. I don't think there are responsibilities in the home that you could say emphatically, biblically, are 100% gender specific. I don't think that. I think that's what you're saying. Uh, Yeah, look, there can be exceptions. Some some families, can it it can work great for that that to happen. What I'm saying is uh, the general nature of the sexes tends to skew towards these different areas. I think what, Jeff, you're alluding to is that maybe... uh, there's there's been some confusion in society around uh, around those the the ways that men and women naturally skew towards more it, more than confusion yeah well i think sabotage satanic okay um i i think there's the reason sadistic the jordan petersons and um jordan peterson and there's other people that have rose to fame is like basically telling guys to get their shit together because a lot of guys don't have their shit together. Yeah. Which is what you're speaking to, Jeff. And guys you do... You got to clean your room. <laughs> yes, that's right. It was good. It uh, just came out naturally. It flowed naturally. Yeah. Don't think about it too much. If we don't have one Peterson or Morgan Freeman on each episode, then we failed. <laughs> yeah. Um, But there's good reasons for them coming to prominence because a lot of guys, Jordan Peterson at his best is somebody that can speak through the culture war. Lately, he's been a little more culture warrior in a way that I don't think is great. He's a, he's a, has been a prophetic influence of like, get, and it's, it's basic psychology, basically, basically, uh, get your shit together. Like if your shit is not together, if your figurative, if your little room is disoriented, Oftentimes, it's a reflection of what's going on inside, which is disorganized, disoriented. And you're going to lash out at the world in a way and not be able to handle different ideas because you, there's that inner strife and angst and cognitive dissonance. But when you clean your physical room, sometimes that can help you feel physically cleaner and that will allow you to process events in the world better. And so you check the box, you did a thing. Aren't you proud of yourself? It's really good. That's really good. <laughs> now you need to get moving. <laughs> like when you do that, I'm pr- I'm really happy for the the audio <laughs> listeners and not the YouTubers because they're going to think Peterson's right here with us right now. Uh, he, maybe he is. I do think there are things that we need to prioritize. I think as I think a godly man prioritizes personal spiritual transformation. Yeah, and I think a, that's one of the things that I see a lack of. In, in men in general. And it's we've been on an attack on that in our church and we're seeing a change, which I'm stoked about. But it is, we're <clears throat> a long way to go and it's taking a long way, to, a long time to get there. But I think guys, it's like when you go up, if you're going hiking, you're more likely to take a trail that's already been blazed as opposed to traipsing through the brush and the undercarriage of the jungle or whatever it is. And I think on more naturally, especially after working hard, taking care of our family, answering questions, solving problems, then our spiritual journey takes the back seat. 
and we we leave the spiritual transformation to our wife and our kids because I know Jesus and I'm good and I'm just trying to be a good person. And that's a great thing, but it's not the thing. And mm. I, so I do think there needs to be a priority, to, a priority for me as a godly man that I'm going to make sure that I'm being transformed daily, like Paul said. Um, I think <clears throat> I think when you described it, I was I was just going through in my head thinking of people, thinking of families, time over the last 10, 15 years at church, and I would say in general it more often than not the wife was the one who was mm-hmm. um came across as more spiritual mm-hmm, mm-hmm. than than the husband did yeah more more often sure generally speaking generally speaking yeah, yeah. It, it, like it's skewed and i don't know if it's like we're talking 60 40 sure 73 whatever but more uh, more of those examples come to mind than the other way around mm-hmm. and i think that's what you're kind of alluding to is the is the abdication of men or succumbing to an attack, so to speak, of of what it means to be a strong man, what it means to be a strong male leader in your family and in the world. Well, absolutely, absolutely. And and society has a virus right now. I mean, men are are, are the they're virus just sick. They're mm-hmm. sick, and they can't. They're having difficulty getting out of it. And, yeah. And yeah, there's a reason women are more spiritual. There's a desire. There, it's like leaving a book open like yeah i wish i had a better man and you're like that wasn't that's that's not you know accidental it's it's on purpose that women are more or we see them as more spiritual because men have dropped the ball and they're not they're well i think women though are, are more inclined to it okay because you know women are naturally because it's their desire well naturally they're better people like if you look at the stat yeah. the stats of of, P, of men to women in prisons it's astronomically different, right? Who commits crime? Young men. Right. 90% or whatever right. it is. It's 100%. <laughs> For this, yes. So the, you, there's naturally better people, I think, that they have are more in tune with the, emo- generally speaking, more in tune with the emotional side. And that is a necessary component when you're exploring the, your faith journey. Yeah. And naturally have, a, a, I think, a greater hunger to do what's right. And I think those are precursors to that. But we, to your point, when you see a family walk in church and you see the the husband as a strong spiritual leader, you go, "That is awesome." You don't say the same thing when 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 it's the woman, not because she's not awesome, but because that's a normal thing for us. Yeah, your first question is, "Where's your husband?" You're getting the complete picture, I think, and the kids yeah. are getting the complete picture. And I'm not saying that women being spiritually strong is not awesome. I'm just it saying awesome. it's more much more normal these days. Some yeah. of that, but it's an incomplete picture for the family. Correct. Right. That's the thing. And so <clears throat> wonderful to have women who are spiritually strong and, and no one's arguing against that. The thing is, that doesn't mean that you've, that, that automatically replaces the missing jigsaw puzzle piece. Correct. Right. We don't have the full picture of what the family's supposed to look like. Yeah, so, the, and the impact doesn't happen without the husband in not in the same a way. part of that piece. Not in the same way, for sure. And to your point, Andy, for single moms, God can redeem that. And that's the beauty of the church, because the church can provide strength for that. But it isn't the same. It isn't the same. No, and, definitely. And I think what you're alluding to is like, same. What are, where, where are there opportunities for male figures within the church mm-hmm. to fill some of that role in, in the lives of those kids? Yeah. And I'm not trying to crap on uh, single mothers at all. Like, good Lord, you're doing the best you can. Yeah, keep doing the best you can. But and your call, it's a fight. Your call out is to say, so so guys in the church, how are you helping? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. single guys in the church, maybe you should be <laughs> considering not creepy, not in what not you, the what, creepy what's way. cooking in there, Zach? What's cooking? <laughs> well, I was I was just thinking back to when you were thinking you, about Scott right now being fl- that guy. <laughs> Scott's should just we cut to the other in this corner? Should we cut to the other oh, clip the, right now? The uh... the girls gone Bible. <laughs> yeah. Oh God! Feels yeah, like... yeah. We will as you're queuing that up. Don't hit play yet. I was thinking back to um, you're you're a sensitive guy. You just read my body language. You can see I was um, <laughs> thinking back to when you turned the question on me of give me an example, and I kind of froze because I wasn't prepared. It's kind of like when somebody's like, "What's your favorite restaurant? Go." You're like, "Oh, yeah. I love somebody." Yeah. Um, but I thought the pizza place back to like, so just my the way to describe that was so <laughs> creepy already. You know that... what it is. Oh, what it is. 
Sorry, David can't help <laughs> so himself. So creepy. <laughs> For the listener, there's not a female in here, I promise. Oh, no. <laughs> He's lost it. Which one is it? <laughs> oh, oh. I might have to go over there in a second. Because uh, there's a couple that are dating slash singleness related. Just go back on the browser. Keep no, going. it's not going to help. Um, but so with Lisa and I, uh, you know, the question was leadership styles. Mm-hmm. Like, is there a, can you lead with a different skill set or is there, mm-hmm. is there the ideal male leader? And that's the way it's got to be. And if you're short of that, that means you're, you're not good enough and you need to step it up. The way I view, and I believe Lisa would agree with this, and she can comment below on YouTube.com. So um, uh, is playing to strengths. Mm-hmm. There are parts of the way I do strengths I have that complement hers, and strengths of hers that complement me in a way where there are times like she's she's taking lead on this, and I that doesn't feel weird to me. It doesn't feel like oh my gosh, I'm I'm not the head of the household. Like to me, it's like the head of the household. I've already lost the battle if I'm like worried about who's the head of the household. So one is that, is that off the mark? Is that not ideal? Do I need to establish more who's the head, or if we're both communicating well and playing to each other's strengths? I see a version of some of this biblical leadership Mm -hmm. that looks like stifling women's gifts mm-hmm. be, for the sake of the hierarchy, mm-hmm. the biblical sure. hierarchy. And I think that is fucked up and needs to go. And that, and I think Agreed. sometimes when people talk about that, it turns into the culture war battle. It's like, oh, you're just, you're one, you're woke and you're, or you're part of the, sure. the new gender thing. It's like, no, I just want to play to the strength of my wife. And I believe a hundred percent that she thinks the same of me. Yeah, and, and our strengths are going to be different than Andy and Lindsay's and sure. Jeff and Tanya's and you guys and and David and his boat. You know, I mean, th- th- it's going to be different. So <laughs> David as a lady, I'm on a boat. Um, he's got a lady. I think, I but, I, in, but in, in terms, to but in lady. terms of your marriage, it, if the fit hits the shan, the burden falls on you, Zach. Depending, what, maybe. What's, All, what's the fit? Yeah, your marriage. So if our marriage ends, it's my it's, fault. It's on you, no matter what happened. Hmm. I need to think on that one for Con- a minute. Connect. It, it, people could connect the dots back, and it'd be like you didn't. You didn't really love your wife well. You didn't speak into your family. You dropped the ball here and there. You were chasing after what X, Y, and Z. And so that becomes a... What if you didn't? What if you did all those things? Then your marriage is going to thrive. What if it doesn't? It will. See, that's where I'm like totally confused because there's countless examples of it being the other case. I don't disagree that oftentimes it is the man's responsibility. And I wouldn't even say, I don't even look at it as like, it's either one or the other. There's going to be a spectrum. And maybe, let's just say for the sake of argument, more often than not, it could rely more on the man being disconnected or weak and not stepping up when he need sh- needed to. But the statement like it is a hundred percent like that's no, in my opinion. And also you're, you're almost making an argument for divorce courts are numbers wise. I don't think you can argue against this. They hammer men financially. Is that okay? Because that is a cousin to what you're talking about. In my opinion. I mean, the biblical worldview has nothing to do with, our courts, whether they're pound, you know, taking the finances away, but they agree. Like it's the man, even if it was the wife's fault, oftentimes the man, be, if he's making more money, gets punished. Some would say unfairly. I'm not going to die in this hill, but this is for the sake of argument. Like it's definitely skewed towards women in a way to because generally men make more money. Um, so is that something you're okay with? If it if the poop hits the fan, even if it's not the guy's fault, but he gets hammered financially because of it. It doesn't seem to work that way. It doesn't seem to... That wouldn't be my argument. My argument would be that the burden is always going to lie with the man. So Jeff is saying it is 100% always the man's fault when the divorce, if a divorce happens. Right? Is that... Yeah. I don't, I don't and, know if and, I agree with that. And, and men should be leading 100%. Welcome to the sinner's couch, Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> I reject that notion. You guys got room over And the there. restoration of all things. <laughs> 
Hey, I, I can I do what I, can we come back in a moment to I want to I want to dive down this avenue for sure, but you said something about the roles in your home and, and you and Lisa specifically. I, I'd love if we can come back to that, like put a stake in it. Because I have a as thought. long as they agree. Beforehand, we talked about how you and I couldn't get into conversations because of what happened last time. So oh. you can as- go on the topic. You just have to ask about me and Lindsay or Jeff. Well, that's and Tanya. fair. Yeah, that's or fair. ask like, or ask us, and we'll convey I that feel to like Zach. I need a hall yeah. pass on the last one, but uh, fair enough. Yeah, you've got some sins to to pay for. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> I've already paid cards on that. Car- carte blanche. Go ahead. Yeah, put, put a stake in it. No, but I not to speak to you specifically, but I think that would might be beneficial for listeners sure. in relation to the whole conversation. But um, I don't know if I agree with that statement. I uh, just to clarify, you're saying that if a couple gets divorced, it's at the end of the day, it's the man's fault every time. The burden will fall on the man. Okay, I think I'm trying to make this ca- this case in my mind. <laughs> you just shot me with your beer, yeah. <laughs> listener. Sorry, Carrie. Uh, no, I was there was a salt that just happened. And Carrie, I get excited when I open. Carrie, drinks. a little yeah. So a, in a different relationship, there's a lot of times where like a a kid will go off the rails, sure, and all of a sudden they're on drugs, and people are like, "What? What went wrong? They were so uh, they're such a great family." Yeah, and later you find out the dad was overbearing, or could be you know, yeah. There there was things happening that weren't seen that trigger kids to go sure all over the place it, it, okay like when you think about psychology and if you've done any therapy so the the vast majority of problems that people have are dad issues that's a reality mm-hmm. so rarely is it mom issues majority of the time it's dad issues unless and, you talk to jesse lee peterson fair so I'm just saying, like, I'm not even trying to make a case for psychology. I'm just saying, pointing out how important fathers are. Yes. But I do believe that the second priority for a, a husband and father, number one, is to prioritize spiritual transformation for me. I believe the second one is to prioritize the physical, emotional, and spiritual needs of my wife and then my kids. That comes before career, that comes before hobby, mm-hmm. everything else. So if you are saying that if my marriage is headed towards the crapper and I'm sitting on my ass doing nothing, then I can, I can go, yeah, I can see the case being made that, that the husband is responsible for doing nothing. But we'll never know. But I would be, well, I can't concede that every divorce is that. I do believe it's the responsibility of every husband to fight for his marriage. Yeah. And I, I realize it's a massive stretch sure. to say what I'm what I'm saying and and ultimately I'm really wanting to bear a lot of burden on husbands men who have l- just lost their sure. their duty are you being hyperbolic then <laughs> to try and get a conversation uh uh, well, I want to know. If, I want to know if you're entering in this conversation. No, no, no. It, in good it is. Faith. It if is you're not a, entering in good no, no. faith. Then, Andy, it is. It, dick move. It's. <laughs> it's not a dick move. It. <laughs> it is. It's laying it out there that we should want all of the burden as men. That's we should want. That's that's a I, different I, argument. Uh, so uh, let's clarify the argument that we that we're all reacting to. The argument that we're all reacting to is that you said, anytime there is divorce. It is yeah. always the man's fault. That's the one that we have a like a knee jerk reaction to. And the first thing that came to mind for me was like Job. Not about divorce, but Job lived a flawless life, right? And his he was, wife is going, You should curse God and die. <laughs> and and so so what you're setting up is if you do everything right, then everything right will happen to you. Yeah, that's not and Job yeah. and the Bible does not promise that. Yeah. And and the story of Job does not promise that uh, at, parts of it do at all. There's, there's a little bit of Deuteronomic like you do good, you will good things happen, you do bad, bad things happen. But that's but not the ahead. same well, as no if you shit. do everything I right, mean, yes. everything right will happen. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Zach. Of course. That but but not always. Yes. It, it's it's You it's, can do you can live righteously and still get cancer. You can live righteously and your spouse break the vow that they made to you at the altar. Yeah. And and so that's that's the point that I think that I I don't just react to. 
that yeah. that's the hard thing that I react to, which is like I'm not abdicating responsibility. Divorces typically don't happen just because only Correct. one person had failure within the marriage. Right. However, I will never uh, subscribe to the idea that it is always a hundred percent the man's fault. I think I wonder if you're that like I was saying earlier, like because you're seeing the abdication of men, you're swinging the pendulum so far that to like you know it's your responsibility. But I wonder if you rephrased it into the a question of hey guys, what if we were willing to fight with everything we have in it to make our marriages healthy, and I think that we would see we would we could potentially see a change in the statistics of Christ followers' marriages not ending in divorce. If you thought the burden was all on you, if you knew it was all on you, it would, would change you how you behave. Would you stop at nothing? Would you stop at nothing? Some would, some would not. Some would like if, me. If I don't fight for this, it's over. No, I'm no, out. no. But I'm talking about the rever- <laughs> the reversal that, yeah. that you would. Just, no, I, I think you're crazy. right. I don't you, think you're, you're wrong. It, it, that's that's all I'm saying. Is it? It's it's all on me. If this goes bad, no matter what, it's you're all on me. You're taking responsibility, and that's a the that is the beautiful thing of yeah. that. It's taking personal responsibility, and. It, like when the uh, even in some of the passages, the order passages, there still is like the wives submit your husbands, but when it gets to the guys, it's like basically die your to yourself, yeah. die to yourself, and Sacrifice, sometimes dying yeah. to yourself is going to look like weakness, and that's where some of this conversation for me gets iffy because sometimes giving your life up for the sake of your family and your wife can look like weakness and will look like weakness for, from the outside which is different than being checked out and not dialed in. Yeah, That's why for, for me personally with, with Lisa, it's like, are we on the same page? Are we playing to each other's strengths as opposed to like, no, I need it to be like this, 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 and this. And I think there are, there's a healthy version of the this, 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 and this. There's a healthy version of old school complementarianism. Like I, I don't battle against that. I know that can happen, but it goes sideways in a hurry. If you just do a little Google search right now on John MacArthur and how much abuse he's covered up in his church for the sake of maintaining the structural integrity of, of the order of the household and the church and stuff, it goes bad because what takes precedent is doctrine over love. And that that's when it's like really gross. And that that is a part of this conversation that's going unsaid. I mean, just to go back to Adam and Eve, where... God is giving Eve, giving woman to man. Like, I, this is a woman for you. This is a helper for you. This is for you. You Even naming her twice. I mean, there, and it's like, but it's, it's like, <laughs> you messed this up. It's on you. I mean, that's just looking way back then. You messed this up because I'm giving this woman to you. And, and he is like, bone of my bone flesh of my flesh like this is the most incredible thing but then when sin happens and it enters into the world both women the woman and the man are punished and they're punished in eve different is, ways eve is cursed and it's the burden falls on the man they're both cursed quite literally yeah, both the cursed curse of sin yeah yeah the sin the curse of sin is upon them Equally not in the same way. She gets pains of childbirth. He has to toil in the land. They're both they're both cursed. Regardless, I I would don't dismiss my point. I'm I'm not dis- regardless. I'm not dismissing it, but I don't would have regard for my point. But the but I'm the burden, to- but the burden okay, regardless of curse fa- <laughs> falls on the man, even in that scenario. See how I just submitted to his manhood? <laughs> so if um so if you did everything that you could as a man, and what, you're, is, what is that? Imagine every <laughs> imagine every version, every single thing that was possible. You exhausted every option. Impossible. Well, this has been a great conversation. <laughs> <laughs> this entire conversation. Go, go ahead. Imaginary. Go I ahead. Don't know what to do? Because I'm trying to figure out how the the version of this works. Because you d- you did everything that was within your power to take on all that burden. And at the end of all of that, your wife said, I don't care. I'm divorcing you. And my, what do you do? What would be your first thought? If your wife told you that you'd be like, 
I did everything I could. There was nothing else to do. Really? You're, you're, it wouldn't be, where did I go wrong? If I, I knew, think- <clears throat> if I knew that I had done everything, so let's pick the scenario. That I, I exhausted all the options. There were no other options left on the table. Damage had already been done. That's and, what husbands she- think every time a woman walks. I did everything I could do. I mean, in this scenario, you fucking did it all. Not you think you did it all. You did it all. And she still walks. What do you do? Because it's still your fault. I, I am. I don't think this is a hypothetical. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I think. I don't know if I fully agree with you. I think that I. What I'm hearing in the subtext is you're responding to the current cultural moment, and I. I can see, I think I can see your, the way that you trace it back where you go, well, yeah, but 10 and 15 years ago, the husband lived a life of seven, eight years doing this. And then it got to a breaking point and then tried to work on it, but it's too late. So now we can put blame on the husband. But I just don't think that that would be an accurate depiction of it. I think the your, your other st- statement was more to me powerful in that. What if as a man, I said, I'm going to take the responsibility of the health and strength of my marriage on my shoulders. That I think mm-hmm. is, I think that's beautiful. That's not controversial. It's not controversial. We would all agree with that point. Sure. Yeah. It's just that if you set up a scenario where any time a divorce happens, it is always the man's fault. I chose wrong. <laughs> Maybe. All right. Sometimes. So we've done some laps around that. I have a question biblically related. Like how much of biblical gender norms are we supposed to apply to our lives today gender norms like i don't know you're you going back to divert us from the hottest part of the discussion i don't know i might make it hotter um it's so hot it means i'm laying a trap um should we go to the babes do you have that queued up do i need to go over there and make sure it's the right so, one i think so the reason, I'm single? <laughs> the reason i'm single is that the clip that sounds right all right. We're about to find out. Hold on. Pull up the... Uh... I thought David was about to tell us something. The reason I'm single. Yeah. <laughs> Continue. Is my number one thing. Somebody asked, do you guys know why you're single? And I'll speak for myself. I know exactly why I'm single because I've never dated a guy <laughs> that God would have approved for me. Not to say, let me clarify and say that I've actually only dated great men. Good she didn't mean that, Derek. Core, but never somebody who's further along in their faith than I am. Yeah. And Cocky. I know without a shadow of a doubt that the person God has for me is like so far along in their faith than I am. And I have such a desire, like a true a yearning to be led oh spiritually. I just want to sit <laughs> and look up at a man talking to me about theology. <laughs> and I'll be oh my so God. happy. You know what I mean? And so I can't I've right now. always been, unfortunately, not in like an insulting way, but there's like a there's a level of respect right? that I'll have for the person person that I'm with when that's the case and I've never experienced that so All right. so she doesn't respect men <laughs> please tell me no. you have that other video too of the couple my yeah, god the young couple right. oh my god that just pieces together can we get some so can we get some reactions to this that's ridiculous that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard <laughs> so first of all the arrogance of the, god I hate these stupid when you when people watch videos and talk about them so I'm I'm like it's fun come on being so hypocritical uh, right now. You, what the thing is there's a difference between just like making fun of them or making fun of the way they look or the talk and there's a difference between breaking down the actual content which I yeah, think you're about to do I mean we just got what 30 seconds so I don't know if that's fair and I don't know. I've never had a conversation with her. I'm, I, she's self-acclaimed, spiritually righteous, which is powerful to be able to say that I I know where I'm at in my spiritual journey in comparison to where you're at in your spiritual journey and the arrogance to think that I can't be in a communion with you and potentially in a union with you because you are not spiritually, quote unquote, rabbit ears further along or stronger than me. That's just absolute arrogance and bullshit. And how do you know that? It sounds like the yeah, parable. Where's, where's the grading metric? It sounds like the parable of Jesus when he's like, remember the tax collector when he went to the temple to pray and he said, oh, I pray four times a day and I fast. And then the tax collector just was weeping and saying, I'm a wretched human. And he said, the tax collector is more righteous than the Pharisee. So to me, I'm going, this is absolutely asinine. And I, I do think it contributes to dudes being like, fine, you can be, you can do whatever you want to do in the spiritual journey. 
for our family. But I, I think it's ridiculous. And, and there are times when my faith is so weak and I'm so grateful for my wife who is strong in faith. And she says, babe, we're going to make it do mm. this. We are, we've, we've been yeah. here before. We're going to, babe, or when I'm discouraged and she's like, Hey, you can lead us. You can lead this church. You can, you got this, babe. I know God's going to give you wisdom for this. Dude, how much do we need our wives oh my to gosh. be in our corner? If she's not in my corner, I don't want to be in the ring. And there are times when it's reverse and she's like, oh, I don't know if I've got this. No, babe, yeah. you have got this. So there are times when her faith is strong and mine is weak. And there's times when it's the reverse. There are times when our kids have led us with their faith. Dude, when how been- crazy is that when that happens? Game changer. It sounds like like mutual submission at work. Yes, I hate that phrase, but yes. Yes, it does sound well, like that. <laughs> We could read a fun. We could like, we no, could, no, no. We'll I, you're that, you're right. No, you're right. I don't know if it's submission as it is like encouragement and support. It's it's recognizing when when your spouse, when your partner is struggling, how can I come alongside them yeah. and help them when they need it, when they need it most. But like uh, you you mentioned it, and uh, as you did, like it struck a chord to me. I love you guys, and a good word, a good encouraging word from each one of you guys is awesome. Game changer. It is. But it's not, it doesn't count as much as it does for my wife. Mm-hmm. Right. It just doesn't. And she's the one that I need it from the most. Especially when she speaks to you. Yeah. Not just general scenarios. No, no, no. But to Andy, you've got this. Or that one weird time where she texted me and she's like, hey, can you tell Andy that I think he's doing great? <laughs> like, it's like, what the fuck? Just text me yourself. Why do you think he's doing okay? <laughs> no, those words, right. those encouraging words from your wife, they hit a thousand times compared to right. what oh, yeah. a, you're best guy friend is going to give you because it, that is that is like a fuel hose of goodness that just fills you yeah up. you can burn forever with that yeah now going back to her maybe she has only dated dudes who order bottle service at clubs i don't know Possibly. i don't know her background <laughs> however uh what i did hear her saying is she wants a more godly man and she wants to be spiritually led can I steel man her argument a little bit? Do it. We'll move past her like bee stung lips and the, you know, the bedroom okay. eyes. That are okay. Showing. Yeah. Okay. The, we Well, come on. We all know the branding that's happening with this, right? This is, it's a little on the nose. Anyway. Fair. Well, I feel like I just want to kneel down and look up at a man and have him talk theology. That's like, it's more than on the nose. You personally want to kneel down and look up at a man? <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me about uh, dispensationalism again, Daddy. Not- <laughs> <laughs> well, see, you're about to be raptured. <laughs> Actually, that's what she said. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that she'll ever find a guy. Cause that maybe not. If that if what guy would want to go into a relationship where she's all verbally confirming that she's spiritually superior yeah which is and that is a, there's not a biblical concept in the new or old testament which would support that as a great place to be mentally spiritually or emotionally so that's ridiculous to me i can't believe i'm doing this let me try to defend this again <laughs> there is a version of this that doesn't have to do necessarily spirituality but internally as we each went through the dating process and eventually chose our wives, we were doing these evaluations. Where is this person in relation to me? You is said she- chose your wives. That's a little bit patriarchal. Oh, so God. we're going to like, can we? <laughs> I did. I, I like chose, your masculinity. I you chose mine. Is that? I will have that one. <laughs> I fought for mine. She was two years older than me. Oh, man. The, uh, but you, so you were 14? <laughs> Sorry, two grades, uh, two grades. She was a senior. I was a sophomore. Yeah, I fought for it, man. Robbing that cradle. Right. Went after it. Uh, I don't. Know, I forget what I was gonna say. Well, that sounds about. It was right. anyway. Good, it was a good the, the point that I was trying to make was uh, there's a version of this that we that we all do regardless, where we're we're evaluating the other and saying, um, are you at in in different categories are you on my level or, or can you can you meet me because if if i feel like in in life in general the type of person that you are is here and i feel like i'm here 
then this is not going to be a good match. Um, and so, outside of dating, just in general, or even within I'm just dating, picking, I'm just yeah. picking on dating. I mean, dating I, relationships, I, like well, okay, let's like friendships, you're saying. Look at this. To to Friends with her, the best to, bros ever. Her point, maybe what she was. Refer- I'm pointing over here. There's a TV where we watch everything. Um, to maybe to her point, what she was saying, what she meant to say. Let's do that. Let's give her the benefit of the Let's doubt. Steel, steel man, her argument. Let's, maybe what she meant to say was, I want to find someone where we have spiritual alignment, where we're headed at the same trajectory with our life, that that God has equal priority in his life as God does in my life. Maybe that's what she meant. She doesn't want to be the woman in the church who's the spiritual leader of the family. And the and de- dad's husband's like, well, I don't even care. Staying at, the dad is staying at home it's watching football season. Football. Yeah, so maybe, to her defense, that's what she meant, and she should have or could have perhaps pinned it in a different way where she said, I'm looking for spiritual alignment. Yeah. She didn't say that. But she didn't say that. <laughs> but I do that in friendships. Well, like, it is a one minute short, yeah. but... I'll, I'll hang out with guys, and uh, I was at your birthday, uh, I don't know, it was a couple years back at Docent. Yeah. Maybe 2020? Yeah. I don't uh, remember. I don't know. Uh, there was a dude there, a friend of y'all's, he was, I also went and I saw you at Salt Creek, he was there with you. He's got like his degree in theology. Colin, Colin Ferris. Dude, we had the greatest conversation mm. for like 45 minutes. And I was like, I could hang with this guy. Friend of the show, Colin Because we were Ferris. like just talking. He's a wizard. We were talking shop. And it was like, dude, this is edifying my soul. Mm. So that was like an instant connection. There's an alignment there where there's a couple other people there at your party that I, we had a great time. We laughed a lot, but it wasn't the same because there was a spiritual alignment. So I can see that. Well, I think we're drawn to people in general who elevate who elevate and challenge us. We want we want to be elevated and lifted in those in those moments. Some guys do. I don't know if every guy, to Jeff's point, I don't know if every guy does. Maybe not every guy. <laughs> I've uh, gone to the bottom of YouTube. There's a lot of dudes who don't. <laughs> yeah, there there is a like there there is something in the air, Jeff, that I totally agree with and that is causing a pendulum swing back to harness the masculine longing for dudes like the that sounded a little gay not even a little that was a lot like, gay I'm put a, that on the short there's a longing for dudes i want to sit <laughs> at your knees and look what'd you say and look up at you that's what she said oh, okay sorry. sorry but i also repeated it so if you want to clip it that's fine no but the, and the pendulum swings a little bit too far yeah. where it's like oh yeah reclaim your manhood so but back to the biblical question like how much does the Bible, how much do gender roles throughout the Bible matter to you guys for us here and now? What do you mean, generals? Gender. Gen- gender roles. Sorry, gender I roles. said it quickly. Ginger uh, roles? Ginger roles. Like a gen- <laughs> That's who, a great question. Who was a military general in the Bible? I'm glad you brought it back because to that. Like, you mean gender roles like you, you should be working, you, not your wife. You brought up Adam providing. and Eve. Um, there's examples of well, Jesus r- did too. roles in the true i didn't say he didn't right you didn't let me finish sorry Carrie. my bad my bad Seth. my bad paul says tons of things like yeah what is and this is a little bit okay i'll just lay the trap deborah was and a i'll prophet. show you my trap um that's scary some of these some of the gender roles that exist today some of the gender battles that are happening um are like our birth out of like ancient ideas yep. about the worth of men versus women. Misogyny, yeah. Women were property in the Bible. I don't think that ever that ever I don't think that ever explicitly gets denied in the Bible. Old There's, Testament. Um in the New Testament too, like you you couldn't women had you needed two women to have like the vo- the voice of one man if they were testifying to you something. You said property. Okay. You're right. Different. But it's the cousin of it. Like women, their word was still, less than still, a man. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So there was definitely a hierarchy. All these things are quote unquote biblical. And this is why when I hear like, this is the biblical view of anything, I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? It's not that there's not, the Bible isn't gearing towards real things that we need to follow. I think that, that does exist. But the New Test, the Old Testament women were property, uh, you know, the sex before marriage talk for David had to happen like seven times. Well, and maybe what you're alluding to is like, where, when do we conflate things, uh, cultural things in the Bible versus uh, directional things for us today? 
and I think a lot of the because I think the lot of, a lot of the things that Paul gives people in that time, he was a product of his culture. Or yeah, for example, slaves were not seen as a negative in many parts of the Bible, right? And that, slavery was never done away with in the Bible. No, it was never done away with in the Bible. It it is, but but the typical argument for that is that this that's a cultural thing that was happening in that day. It doesn't mean that we should now that slavery is okay today. Yeah. And I think you can look back and use parts of the Bible to make slavery a problem. And that's that's the beauty of the Bible. Is yeah, like it's a no no. There's yeah. like there's this multivocality where it's like if you if you need every description of the way the world works to come from the Bible and have equal weight, it's like you're going to end up with a mess because... That's not how the Bible was written. Right. It's a product of its time. So that's why if we refer to Adam and Eve and want to like... And it is timeless. (laughs) Yeah, but you have to to weigh scripture. (laughs) You have to weigh scripture against scripture. And so you have to... when You you have to weigh all of Paul's writings because they're consistent with each other. They're consistent with Jewish cultural normatives. And I agree with um, that second part, but Paul of Paul's writings, you don't think you should weigh them against each other? Well, I think you just need to read them for what they are to the best of your ability, but the idea that they're 100% consistent. The second thing you said, I already forgot, but I agreed with that second thing. The second thing I said was, I'm right in everything I say. Okay. And you agreed. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Keep going. So you don't have to uh, don't worry about it. Okay. with me and... and you know, church fathers for and, thousands of years. It's not a big deal, but yeah. we'll we'll move on. Listen, Carrie, Zach knows better. You should trust him. I do think that <laughs> Paul was pretty pretty clear. I think he was the most liberal towards women of all the writers in scripture. Early Paul for sure. <laughs> Who's like the same the, Paul as la- no, later, later Paul. Paul? Later Paul, some of the stuff No, was, you're taking out of context Corinthians, Timothy, and Paul Titus, saw- which were specific to churches and the demonic cults that they were battling at those times. No, so that's I don't. What I'm I don't disagree with that. What when do you, you think touch about, my knee? It makes me I, happy. I, I, <laughs> I dropped off after Paul's second album. Wait, which knee? <laughs> Doesn't matter. Um, I'm looking at David for that smile. <laughs> okay, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I don't want to stop you. Um, no, that's fine. But early Paul is pretty, really progressive for the time. And don't let the progressive word. Sure, sure, sure. No, trip, no, in, in a healthy way. Um, and later, a lot of scholars think I'm not a Bible scholar. A lot of scholars think that some of those letters were written by people in Paul's name. And so that's where you get a, it almost, it looks like it's taking a step back where it does get into like more specifics. No, let's, let's get back to the control of the household. Cause early Paul is like no male, or female, no slave or fr- free, no Jew, no Greek, like which was the, salvific in nature. So that is true. Different. But yeah. there, but there's, there's a, there's more than that example, but yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, he was pretty radical for the time and definitely moved the ball forward. Um, but I, that's why I, I just say, like, I, I don't look to, at... I need to read some of those. You have to shoot, shoot your woke theologians. My, no, I'm kidding. If you, I'd love to read some of that because I, in, in okay. my studies, I haven't heard that narrative. But I was going to say this to talk about the gender roles. Please. I do believe Jesus alluded to that when asked about marriage. The first thing he said was, in the beginning, God created Adam and Eve. So I think he alluded to that. And I think that matters. And to what you said earlier, Andy, you were like, there are gender roles that matter. Women are matriarchal. They're nurturing. They're compassionate. Men are not that. No. But even in Jewish in, in Jewish culture in that time, the role of parenting was primarily on the mom from birth to 12 and then, or whatever the age was, 13, 14. But then it shifted to the father because he was a primary source of helping them ident- under, understand their identity, mm. which you mm-hmm. can say, okay, that makes so much sense in your teenage years, realizing who I am. In, in an abstract form as opposed to don't touch the fire, it's hot. And I love you. I'm sorry that you're, you're sick or sad. But uh, all that to say, the hardest thing to get away from would be in Ephesians when Paul is talking to us about marriage. And so I do believe that there is an order in the home. And this, I think, is what completely Jeff is alluding to. And we see that through scripture in the Trinity. It's established in the Trinity. Uh, Jesus did not speak unless it was on the Father's behalf. The Holy Spirit only spoke what God, the Father told him to speak. So there's an order in the Trinity. And then in the same flow of order, which has governmental and authoritative, Paul says the husband is the, is it Kalafel? Kafalel, I forget how you probably know it. 
the head of the household, which in all Jewish writings, all throughout time, always represent headship. That is a major contention today. There's few people who are trying to say it doesn't mean headship in authoritative government flow. But I just can't, I can't find something that's convincing me otherwise. But it's in that same passage of scriptures. In other words, that the, the man is the head of the household. It's in that same passage, though, where Paul says, wives, submit to your husbands, and husbands, lay down your life. Mm-hmm. So I think he countered himself well. He's, I think Paul was saying, hey, at the end of the day, the buck stops with you, but you are to surrender your life to them. I don't think that that means that, that there are very many huge gender roles within the home. I think that... I think that has to do with personality. You know, I think it has to do with your wiring and your wounding. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it has to do with your strengths and your gift mixes. But I, to speak to one thing, I believe it is not important, but it is essential for your fam, for the family to hear the voice of the father, husband speaking to the direction that we're going. That doesn't mean it needs to be the voice of the husband, father saying, get on board or get out. I'm the man. But I believe your kids and I believe your wife needs to hear you say, okay, we've talked this through. We've prayed this through. You know what? Your mom and I, we've decided this is the way we're going. This is the decision we're making. They need to hear that from you because of the way God designed the family. I don't think that that means that you have to arrive at a conclusion because the the father's the one that said this. Because I think there's been times where, multiple times in our life, where Megan's like, I think we need to do this. I'm like, okay, I'm behind it. So this is the decision we're making as a family. Does that make sense? So I don't think that there, the gender role, gender roles are as crucial. I just think that if we remove our voice from the home, then we are unintentionally abdicating our role. Well, like you said earlier about initiative. Yeah. About the husband's initiative. And speaking up and speaking into it. My my wife sent me a message today about something our daughter done. She's like, I think these should be the consequences. And I'm like, hey, <laughs> I'm on board with that. Yep. And I'll talk to her, yep. you know, when I get home tonight. Your mom and I decided. And yeah, eggs. Yeah. yeah. And lay it out. But if I don't speak, I'm like, you know, would you, can you tell her? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I'm on my way out the door is really what I'm saying there. Just. Yeah. Cause if that becomes the rule instead of the exception then I believe we are unintentionally abdicating that role. And then we're creating a culture of unhealthy masculinity. And you have a culture in your home, either by design or by default. So the default would be what we allow to happen, whether it's conscious, subconscious, or just by abdication. Design is, okay, let's sit down, have a conversation with the family. And I think that part is, it is, so essential for our my kids my daughters need to know see a healthy model of masculinity in our home i like the way that you described it i heard someone mention that years and years ago are you living by design or default yeah and 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 it's a good challenge because it for me it it instantly like crystallizes the idea of wait am i just going through the motions Mm -hmm. am i an a passive participant in my life and the life of my family or am I someone who's trying to actively be involved and engaged and owning the things that I need to be owning? And, and or, or am I abdicating? Am I mm-hmm. just saying, great. okay, whatever, whatever will be, will be. I don't care. That's Sorry, great. I touched your knee. That's all right. You, <laughs> I you were feeling I was going to bring up the same thing is like the, in all aspects of life, fatherhood, husbandry, brother, sister, who, Whoever you are, whatever your role is, or whatever you've been given in this life, like, is are things happening by design? Like, what would the what would your character do well, if if you were playing this? If you were writing the story of your life, what would your character do? And oftentimes we're, we live like, oh shit's just happening to me, and so oh man, life sucks. We live in the busiest time ever. <clears throat> life has never been more busy than so now, true. and I think that that can can toss you into living by default because you don't need to be do much for shit to just happen. Yeah. Right. It just, it's mm-hmm. just going. And so the effort, it ta- it feels like it takes more effort now than it ever did in, in history to live by design mm-hmm. and to stop 
just pause in oh. the middle of it all. Because the because the momentum is crazy. You're like three months just went by. <laughs> yeah, three years just went yeah. by, and we did seventeen hundred activities. Yeah, we did all the activities. Um, I I I mean, I had the clip from Vody, and he says it so well about about the equality and and like he talks about order and and I, I'm we don't need to watch the clip, even though he says it way better. But when but, that voice, but it's so good. It's almost as good um, as yours. The value, like value of women and men are equal. Value is equal. Mm-hmm. The responsibilities yeah. break differently. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's a good way to put it. Men, yeah. men, they've been called to lead. Women have been called to help. They're, they're still the same value. And so the idea of like submit, it's like that, that can't be bad. It can't be bad. And the idea of like mutual submission, as Bodhi would say, it's like there is no such thing as mutual submission. And he breaks it down really well. And he's like, but you can only one can submit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And and so and he clarifies that. I would really I would the Do you want to watch it? No. Could, no. <laughs> it's two it's two it's, it. it's no, two because, minutes. Because we're like we're two hours in and it's gonna if it's two minutes, we're an hour forty. Depends. We're an hour forty in, but it is it's good. It's two minutes. Okay. It is a good one. All right. See, how I submitted there. Two people can't. Can submit I make at a point about? Fuck. I want to come back to that in a minute. I want, it I is fun. Make it. It's so fun. I want to take my shoes off because it is getting. It's toasty oh, in here. It's getting warm. It smells like dude in here. You you had it up. You had it to the right time. Yeah. Yeah. He's got it, <laughs> dude. Producer David crushing to but let me also point this out wives submit to your own husbands as to the lord the bible doesn't say all women submit to all men amen somebody <laughs> the bible doesn't say he's talking to white people right now all women i know it submit to all men this is about order <laughs> within the context Truth. of the marriage relationship my wife is called to submit to me to me as her husband. This is not about value, it's about order. Anything with two heads is a monster. Amen? I always say, if you, if you find something with two heads, you either kill it, or if you can catch it and put it behind glass, make people pay to come see it, right? He always says that? That's a weird thing to always say. <laughs> yeah. Always, 100%. This is about order, not value. Again, since he uses this military term, um, I think it's appropriate to use a military illustration That's here. Submission. If you have, if you have two people in, in, in a unit, in a military unit, and one of them is an enlisted man, he's a sergeant, and he's been there for 10 years. But the other one is an officer, right? You got a young lieutenant who's been there for, for, for 10 months. Well, well, who's more valuable? It's not a trick question. It's the enlisted man who's been there for 10 years. Amen? It is. But in terms of order, who's superior? The officer. The officer who's been there for 10 months or 10 weeks or whatever. And for the sake of order, when... The officer gives the order. What does the more valuable enlisted man do? Salute and execute. And if he doesn't, everything breaks down. Because it's not a question of value. It's a question of order. Insert talks about German Nazis. I feel like Zach is losing his mind right now. It's not a good analogy. No, it's not. It's a worldly analogy. When... When Adam's you want to be like the world, you do that hierarchy power over move where the literally the the conscripts or the soldiers underneath they don't have any choice, they don't have any agency. They do whatever that person said. That might be the worst example of marriage <laughs> that I can think of. And I don't am not disagreeing with the, the fact that there are certain innate strengths on average that men have and the idea of men stepping up and having agency and not being deadbeats. But I don't think that's a good analogy at all. That's why I said Germans. 
Nazis. Yeah. So, so you had, you had leadership Does who he... said we're going to go and kill. And this is what eleven happened. million Jews. So I don't. I haven't seen the rest of this, Jeff. Maybe you can tell me. Does he go into what it looks like for a man to die to his wife? That was the next minute. Okay, <laughs> and we'll see if if his analogy is just as shitty as that one. Then I'm not sure I'm going to like it. But I, I I like listening to. I don't disagree with with a lot of what he's saying and his general direction. And the point is not that the the officer is in charge. It's the point that that chaos ensues when we don't have order. That is definitionally correct. I agree oh, with that 100%. Yes. You don't like the analogy, though. It's terrible. Because, ju- I'm serious. Look into, and this is some of this is recent, look into John MacArthur and some of the abuses he's covered up, some including pedophilia, letting people remain in charge, and a lot of it stems from this, well, the man said something, the woman said something, we're going to go with the guy. Yeah, but that's anecdotal. No, so. <clears throat> it is, and I'm not making a blanket statement against the fact that men can be leaders in the household. I'm not saying that. However, what I what I would like to direct people to, and I'm going to do it right now with the words that I say, is um, is when Paul says faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these is love. Or you could have the faith that moves mountains. You could have the best doctrine, all that stuff. If you don't have love, it's rubbish. Always test it. What is what's the fruit that's coming out of this tree of order and hierarchy? Is it bearing good fruit? If it is, awesome. Mark Driscoll is another example. But oftentimes we lean on the doctrine and the order ahead of love and we make love subservient. And that's when the damage happens. And that kind of spiritual abuse is total horseshit and it's inexcusable. And it doesn't happen as much from the side that's more egalitarian. It's going to definitely happen with but people that are obsessed with the order. Yeah, I'm but not- other problems emerge. I think that I think you're not wrong in that that abuse sucks. But that doesn't we cannot take the frailty and fallenness of man and dismiss theological congruences. We can't go I am going to now throw this away because priests molested boys. I'm going to throw this away because so John MacArthur is covered disagree- up. Are you disagreeing with the hierarchy of love being the priority? You could have the right faith. You could have the best faith in the world. You could have the best doctrine in the world. But if you don't have love, it's fucking bullshit. My paraphrase. Yeah, I think that. I think that's exactly how Paul said it, actually, yeah. in Corinthians. Thank you. Yeah, I'm so working I don't, on my own translation. I'm not disagreeing with that. But what you're suggesting is somewhat damaging and dangerous because you're suggesting that if we experience something that is broken in the name of God, then we should dismiss what the scripture says until we find what fits our own paradigm better. That's not what I said. No, no, it's not what you said. That's in the subtext. because the, you're, re- you're adding that to what I said, sounds like. It would be hard for people listening to not pull that. Because you you said... Would you like to clarify, Zach? Well, I, That's a great question. If we could roll it back. Go ahead and roll it back. Also, I'm just kidding. We're not allowed to talk to each other very long. I'm sorry, Zach. <laughs> yeah. That's it. I'm, no, I'm not saying anything else anymore. You could ask me what Zach was thinking. What was Zach thinking, Andy? <laughs> well, let me tell you. <laughs> Land that plane. It, no, I, I specifically said, if the hierarchy thing is working and it's bearing good fruit, awesome. That's not... I don't choose to emphasize that way in my relationship. I choose to go for the, the fruit. I love that fruit. So if that hierarchy, that old school, just the classic gender roles in the household, if that is bearing good fruit in your life and people's gifts are not being stifled, awesome. I'm not, I don't want to take that away. I'm just saying when abuse happens, it's because we prioritize the hierarchy over love. And there's a clear love is the top of the hierarchy for Paul. It feels like we set aside common sense. We look at this and just go, well, all the signs point to X, but I guess we have to do Y because doctrine. Yes. Zach, I feel like you're- That's dangerous you're always to me making too. the can exam- be, but not always. Always taking it like- It can be dangerous both ways. Look at what happened here, and that's because of the order of hierarchy. When it's really just somebody who covered something up and did something stupid and- wasn't because, honest with people be, because <clears throat> they have the doctrine of the man is the head of the household and literally in these examples it's well he said he didn't do that or well he said he was sorry 
and the abuse continues because of the hierarchy. That's a pro- that's wrong. That's sin. Thank you. I'm just looking for that. Yeah, no, I agree. Like, I feel like you guys are arguing against something. But it didn't that, start. No, that's fair. Order wasn't not cr- me. Order not wasn't you, Zach. Cr- Jesus. I believe in you. No, I okay. I I'm sorry, Zach. I 100 percent believe that that is sin, non negotiable. I don't agree with Vody Bachman's illustration of that military, but I didn't hear the whole clip, so maybe in context it makes more sense. There's a whole lot more yeah. before that. I like a lot of what he says. If he if he tie, if he ties the bow on the other side of the male, I actually have I don't recall, but I know it goes to twenty eight eleven. So yeah, I don't. I think the word hierarchy doesn't even belong here though, because that's not no. That's hierarchy, power, there. none of that belongs there. Yeah, but that's exactly what he, that was his whole example. That's what you took from it. Power. No, it's not. It's talking about order and how th- if things are not in order, there's chaos. This is true, but does the lower person have power over the other person ever? No. How is the, order different than hierarchy? Maybe you're, well, I don't think that the, if you. First of all, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not on a. I think that John. The, I don't know what happened with John MacArthur. I don't want to speak to something I have no clue of. And you know, whatever the internet says is 100 percent factual all the time. Always, every so time. So I don't know. <laughs> I'm not saying any of that stuff. Uh, I don't think that the word hierarchy is in Ephesians, and no, and nowhere does it say that the. In, nowhere can you pull from that context that the man is to lord over the woman. It's the exact opposite. So I think we're conflating not theology we're conflating ideology and that's dangerous and so i think that your your point is accurate uh it's biblical that if the greatest thing is not love then we're the, like the sound of a annoying symbol or a clanging gong and so i agree with you and i think that's i mean paul said that so i, I don't disagree with that at all i just want to take this moment and just recognize you said something i said is biblical <laughs> just hold on to that just gonna hold on to that I, I do. I've, I think that was 100% accurate. And I don't disagree. 90%. <clears throat> I don't disagree with... This isn't a like... It's. I think the danger of... And the, the danger of all the culture wars is like, you got to be on one side or the other. It's like, I, I like some of the things that Vody Bauckham says. I've heard some of the other stuff. I, I'm not a polar opposite of like the male headship stuff. I just think in today's culture, there's going to be like play to people's strengths. And that I think I believe, and, and maybe this is wrong. And if you guys disagree, tell me part of dying to yourself for your spouse and your kids and your family or your friends, no greater love is this than the one lays down his life for his friends is it can look like weakness. It can look like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to do the thing that's good for you. That even if it does result in my humiliation and also, there are times where I need to step up and do a little bit of that. I really feel strongly about this, and here's why. And if you've communicated well with your spouse or your friend, there's going to be that good dialogue. There's trust there yeah. in, in a healthy relationship where your wife's going to be like, I trust you. Let's do this. And vice versa. When when she feels strongly about something and you guys are on the same page, boom. Awesome. Um, my resistance is just the, no, it's got to be this way. And if it doesn't look like this way the same way, then... Yeah, I get that. We don't all feel... St- the same level of passion or feel as strongly about every single topic. Like it just, yeah. it's just impossible to happen. And like we've talked about before, or I've mentioned this in the past, like one of the things that was helpful for Lindsay and I early in our marriage was to realize when we encounter some decision that b- needs to be made, both of us won't always engage with it with the same level of passion. Oftentimes there'll be something where like, I, I don't really care. Yeah. So, our decision was, well, who's most passionate about this thing? Great. Why don't you make the decision about this thing? Because I actually don't care. Yeah. I, I trust you enough that whatever you decide is going to be best for our family. But I, that's but that's kind of communicating just yeah. the kind of general things that yeah. happen in life in terms of like, hey, uh, you know, you all three, all four of us are going to quit our jobs and tell our wife, you know, I'm going to stay home, play ping pong, video games, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'll hang out with the kids. You then divorce work. is your fault. And get yeah, <laughs> right, hundred no. percent. Because because we're true. supposed to lead, provide, and 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 step it up. And if we don't do that, then it's all over. So there's order there. I think the I little thing. I the, don't the, disagree. Sorry. The things no, no, of discussing, no, no. like oh, we're gonna. You're passionate about that. I'm like, yeah. Those are just kind of the general things. It, the big things, like I'm gonna protect. <clears throat> I'm gonna provide. I'm I'm gonna. Sure. You know, those are the big things. I mean. That is how that is part of the order. Men will provide, men will protect, 
Men. That doesn't mean men will make more money than the woman. So that if that's if by definition they provide, which kind of speaks to somewhat Zach is talking about. But if the man is working his rear end off about to prioritize his family, I think that matters. And Andy did. Sorry. <laughs> My bad. And Words of affirmation. Words of affirmation. I feel so much better. And but this, if Lindsay would have said it, I would have felt even better. Right. Come on, Lindsay. <laughs> and the fight with like the equality in society, that's not good. Like, oh yeah, women get out there in the workforce. Things happen out in the workforce. Men are brutal. And there is... There is not the greatest things that could happen with your marriage, sending your wife out. I feel like you should focus this statement. <laughs> yeah. Feel like you should. Email him at Jeff at brosbiblesandbeard.com. <laughs> feel like you should focus this yeah, statement. Yeah, I, I think I know where it, you're trying to go, but you need some clarity. Like, let's yeah. rephrase it, the, maybe. The, the idea Jeff of. Jeff is bowling, and they're your bumpers yeah, right yeah. now, I think. <laughs> the, the idea of creating uh, or just. I, everybody's equal in this world. Men, women, they're all the same. It doesn't matter. And wives just, you know, go and do as a husband does or go in the a, a male environment. Um, you're There's going to be, there could possibly be a wedge that gets created in your... I work with lots of women. Is that okay? You do too. I do. Is that okay? Yes. You sure? But you just said they shouldn't be in the workplace. Should, that's not what he said. If it was the woman, dang near close. So I feel like. Am I? How far off am I? They shouldn't be. You, well, hey, this is why I'm like clarify. Say say it in a different way because I don't think you're saying women should never have a job. No. Yeah. The not smart sh- people jobs. Women our ever- ability to protect our wives and women and our and our our girls is the more equal we are the less we can protect them in our society. I, I don't know what that means, but can I, is it a problem if a woman and a man are married and the woman is making the money and the man is at home? That's going to have some serious I think it's going to have a major impact on the man because of the way he's naturally wired. It's going to hurt him. It's going to hurt the kids. Yeah. But I don't think it's a, I don't think it's morally wrong. Okay, I feel like no, that's that's the direction not of, morally wrong. of where you guys were going. But that's you I, guys. I, I just, but when whoa. she come, when she comes, well, you yeah. disagreed with it. Yeah, you did. You <laughs> what signed do you mean? up for it. You put your name on you it. Disagree with it with your question. The yeah. table show. But when she comes home and fa- I found a good man an who works hard. You in. alluded to what he was saying previously, not in answer to your question. But I, I do think that men need, they're wired to accomplish something and to produce and provide. I don't disagree with that. Yeah. So that, that's what I mean by that. I don't yeah. mean that there's a, a lot of this is testosterone. The, the crime, yeah. the, the men, yes. men that don't have purpose, and this is where Jeff's going to agree with me, me the most. It, young men that don't have purpose is a problem yep. because any man that doesn't have purpose. True. Yeah. But any man Amen. of but mine. The, the young part is in, like testosterone is Shemire. dialed up to 11, like aggressive. The way, what makes people aggressive is testosterone. I'm, I'm reminded of a story of a trans individual that uh, biological female trans transitioned to male and got on testosterone and was like, oh my God, I get it. I, I feel like I need to touch myself all the time. <laughs> yeah, I feel like yeah. I need to fight people. I need to go break something and, and burn and it. And so they, they're they not, it's, it's not like a, it's like, I I get it. I get the struggle of being a young man kind of a thing. Um, biology is real. It has real consequences. And so like increased testosterone, all that stuff. So that's why the Jordan Peterson has best speaking to young men that are directionless. Like get your shit together. you got to get it together. You've got to get mm-hmm. it together. <laughs> Shut up, piggy. <laughs> <laughs> now that's some hierarchy. I can I get feel, behind. Don't you feel like though all the things that we're talking about play to our strengths and every one of our strengths has a shadow side and the shadow side is what we have to be keenly aware of. So I'm just thinking about just listening to you, Zach, talk about the potential dangers of this, you know, hierarchy, quote unquote. And, and the shadow side of my strength would be to drive forward be aggressive, get on board or get out of the boat, you know, kind of thing. 
Let's go. Follow me. Take no prisoners. Mark Driscoll. Sure. Yeah. I'm an eight on the Enneagram. Then my shadow He's side. He's a Driscoll on the Enneagram. Is going to be vastly different than your shadow side. Right. So I think what you, I think what some in the subtext you're saying is it's going to be crucial for me to be keenly aware of that so that I'm not becoming some dominant misogynistic asshole. And the same would be true for you, but maybe to go, actually, I might need to step up here and assert myself. Yeah. I'm not trying to tell you. I'm just saying, is that a a possibility? There's a good version and a bad version of that characteristic is what you're saying, right? Yeah. yeah. Like we can manifest these in positive, negative ways. Because like, I would think you would probably tell me, Gary, you probably need to just chill out and not have such so many opinions, right? Uh, no, it's just ha- how is it? Sure. How, how are you expressing? Yeah, I I agree in general. Like, sure. Yeah. Without quibbling too much. Like I. While you were describing that, dude, I kept thinking of that. That uh. Oh, did we? All systems. Click on the left. Click on the left screen. Just this no, no, not into that. Just click on the left screen. Just anywhere in it. Yeah. Producer Dave. There you go. We're still this going. This is ground control um, to major tone. So I, Hold on. I, I, I just had a quick thing on that. Is that okay? Good. I yeah I will submit. Stop it! I will. No, just if stop. Re- just start talking. If we rewound, I had started talking before we hit this. You did. Yeah. And let's uh, let's land this plane. But go. Okay. Zach wants to stop the best conversation we've had in seven episodes. I just I just listened to a five hour Joe Rogan episode, so I know it was great. And you told us to go listen to it. Yeah. This why are you worried about it? People, That's if the one? people like you, they'll people. keep coming back. Okay. Uh, you reminded me of this. Uh, John Mayer song called Shadow Days and and the chorus of that song says I'm a good man with a good heart had some hard times um, I can't remember what the next line is but he says my shadow days are over and and when you describe that like every time I heard that song I, like I always think back to like a period in my life where I felt like I lived in the lived in the, in the shadow, shadow days in those shadow days and it's the reminder of like hey i am a good man i mm-hmm. do have a good heart those days are over great and i think that's that's the thing that we keep like holding on to that we're, we're yeah. trying to touch on right now which is like it's like a healthy bearing yeah there's a part of us that like yeah we we get drawn to those things and, yeah. we, and we may get stuck in them for a little while but like what is at the core are you a good man with a good heart then you will then do, then do the right things, right? Like live live the right way, live the way that Jesus laid out for you. I right. think Paul said that too. I forget what lies behind, and I strain forward for the upward calling of Christ. I think that have you read Paul before? A couple of times. <laughs> but sometimes I hate reading. But him, that but sometimes like having too. that song like becomes a mantra, like yeah. a, a reminder, like yeah. no. I, I am a good man. It's great. I, am, I have a good heart. That's great. Had some tough times. Had a rough start, but my shadow days are over. Like it's good. It 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 is in some ways the story like what Jesus calls us. Hey, yes, this was you weren't doing so well there. So change that. Yeah. Move forward. Change that and don't get. I think there there's, there's like the. Psycho- psychological term or maybe I'm doing bro psychology which is not surprising <laughs> is like the, a shame spiral of it's like oh no I don't want to do the bad thing don't like don't think of the pink elephant don't think of the pink elephant oh shit I'm thinking of the pink elephant like the shame spiral of like keeping you this in it this is who I am I guess yeah and it's not perfect but I like the analogy that I made up of <laughs> Christians being like a dog if you make eye contact with a dog when it's pooping God, you have you done that? No. Yes. The dog looks at you like, oh, oh my god, <laughs> he sees me. He sees me doing this. Oh, my dog just looks right through. Well, me. your dog god, is German what? and soulless. <laughs> but. What's wrong with you guys? No, but the dog. New podcast, bros, bibles, and bitches. <laughs> <laughs> The dog. I like to go to the dog park just yeah. to get those moments. I like to leave my dogs alone when they're taking I a dog. Roll around the <laughs> yeah. dog park. Zach's looking, like, look at me. Looking look for at the me opportunities. in the eyes. I'm like, oh, oh there's you, one. There's one right there. When Hold you take on. a shit, you look at me. And I get down there in his face. I'm like, how's that feel in your soul? Are you ready to poop? Does that feel good? Oh, are you going to poop? How do you feel right now? 
Do you feel the shame of your poop? What is happening? You should feel the shame of your poop right Holy now. Holy smoke. I in think the, we got our opener. In this shitty analogy, pun intended. Quite literally. Uh, the dog is us. And it's like, if in the moment, like, oh my gosh, they're, they're watching me make this mistake. I'm making a mistake. And literally after it, they brush it off. They flick all the leaves off. Like they brush it off. And instantly they're back to like, we're best friends, right? And I think some... A unhealthy version of Christianity and shame is is like, oh, I made a mistake. I gotta wallow. I, I gotta go. I gotta go. Dude, Jesus never says that. He I never know, says. I know. But go sit in this. He's like, just stop doing that. Do this. Right. And be, he, be better. And you, I know. But people are stuck in the shame thing. And um, but Carrie's thinking about it. And he likes a little bit of shame. I'm just wondering what this has to do. With, where are you going with this? Is, are you in a Freudian way revealing that you struggle with shame? Or pooping. I, what, where are we going? I like to poop in my lawn. <laughs> I want to stare at you in the eyes when you take a dump, I, Zach. I, I have, uh, and if you do poop on the lawn, if, if, you should feel shame. It'd be around 945 any night. <laughs> hey, all right. It's my Just house. Just FaceTime me. It's, it's face my property. Me. It's my dominion, Carrie. You can. You can. I have not. I have no problem with wherever that. I you're, want. You were claiming it that way. I like the analogy. Where are you going? What are you trying to say? I don't struggle with shame. Okay. Um, and there's part of me that's like, should I struggle with shame more? Because a lot of my upbringing was the other side of that. Like, which is, no, oh my gosh, you, you did this this thing. Like, yeah. God, God hates you because of that. But Jesus, don't worry. And so there's the unhealthy version versus the healthy. Mm. And I, I don't. We don't need to open another can of worms. No regrets. But um, that's great. No yogurts. Um, so, and I, I don't want to end this, but I, don't, I know it's. I have it, it a feels good. And uh, okay, thank you for for shaming ac- us, acquiescing for a little while. Jeff, I'll give you the last word. Thank you for organizing this and setting up the clips. Um, and I, I feel like there's a lot more that could have gone. Good news, we do a podcast and this stuff can come up again, but yeah, we do you could, want we to could have, like we could have part two of put this. your yeah. do you want to put your bow on it? Like f- for better or worse. I know it's not you don't we don't have enough time for it, but no, put, I, I don't need put to put your a bro bow on it. <laughs> <laughs> I think um us men especially husbands, husbands of wives and uh, fathers of children and men in church, um we have a great calling. And there's a great burden on us. And that's a good thing. It's good to have a burden. Like we have purpose and for our wives, for our kids, for our friends and, uh, and the community around us, especially in church. And, um, because from there, you know, the spirit just flies out of that church with all the people in community. And if, if we have this light there, there's, there's so much it's exponential. And I guess my, my hope and prayer is that, that happens. That ha- that is happening. That I pray that the pendulum is swinging back, and it's it's drawing men to God to just be a better version of themselves for Jesus. And and so, if I was going to put a bow on it, that that is it. Men be better and, and be great leaders and and lovers and uh, light um, for your family, and your wife, and everyone. That's it. And so if you want to get a book on that, She Comes First would be a good recommendation for being a better lover. If you want to look that up, uh, that's my what are you consuming is She Comes First. Uh, I don't remember the author, but... uh, It wasn't you. (laughs) 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 Jeff, thank you. Seriously. No, thank you. Thank you. That was good. I appreciate it. Yes. A uh, little bit of you. What are we consuming? <clears throat> you. What are we consuming? Let's, yeah. let's talk about it. We we can, we don't have to extend it, but if there's something interesting that you're consuming, that's worth worth uh, sharing. I started Shogun on Hulu. It's an FX show, and just, feudal Japan. Feudal Japan. One episode in. It's a little slow, uh, but seems very interesting. To use a word that I shouldn't use. Is it visually stimulating? <laughs> it is. It's it's um I've heard word about more episodes that it is. Um I just mean is it beautiful? It is beautiful. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, but you sound like you're alluding to the fact that there's boobs involved later on. 
Um, so far, one boob sighting. <laughs> Just one boob. <laughs> one pair. The other boob not shown. One pair. <laughs> Uh, but I, I'm not triggered by that stuff. Uh, if you are triggered by that stuff, there's that and violence. So because do, like don't Zach said, he has no shame. No shame. So <laughs> I poop on my own lawn, which is something I have never done before. But I might now that we've joked about it. It he feels like something I should do. He poops on his lawn do. and he watches soft core porn. Soft core porn. It is no shame because there <laughs> there no if shame. there's no shame, it's good. <laughs> That's exactly what I said. Yeah. All right. He that did. Is- he did say. Uh, I don't know if I should have more shame, which yeah. alludes to the fact that he does have shame. I think okay. it just. I have a. I have a healthy version of like testing myself yeah you feel so confident in this do you sh- should you back this off okay consuming right. shogun i am between shows so i've gone back to old shows i started uh peaky blinders again for the third time and i freaking love it and dude just signed on for the movie what's his name i don't know the main guy killian name. killian just signed killian on for Murphy. the movie and then i started ozark again Dude. And then I just crushed Inventing Anna with my youngest daughter, which is a phenomenal show. That's the chess one? No, that's the one about Anna Sorkin, the like the socialite in New York who conned everybody. Oh, it's so good. It's the same chick from the chess one. Ozark. Ozark. Same chick from Ozark. Ruth. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's Ruth. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Or Rose. Ruth Rose. What's her name? Yeah. I don't give blip about yeah. blip. It's fantastic. I don't know. So just re- I rehash don't know an shit old. About <laughs> that's, that's her line. Uh, that's the greatest line in all of cinematic history. Uh, Ozark is fantastic. It is like twenty-seven t- episodes of tension. Oh, I love it. It never releases so the great. tension. I love. I love From Jason. The moment Bateman. that it starts, you're just like. Oh. It's so brilliant. Yeah, it is great, though. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. Jeffrey? I'm still watching soccer. Oh, my God. Are you getting up in the middle of the night to watch it? Getting up early, staying up late. He puts the man chest in Manchester. <laughs> They're trying to make a run for it. Or I'm glad rock- you don't put the her in Chester. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, I... This morning, I listened to, um, what's his face? The CEO of OpenAI being interviewed by Lex Friedman. Mm. And Lex Friedman is such a funny interviewer. Man, if you would deconstruct like what he's doing, he, like the individual pieces, it should not be good. It shouldn't be. But he, somehow. He shouldn't be a good interviewer because he's like, Carrie, <laughs> tell me. I can't stop it. You got to go faster. That's what he does. He's like so two times speed. But his questions are fantastic. And and he's such a slow speaker. But it's it's pretty fascinating to hear that that back and forth. I, I appreciated both of them. That was something that I was consuming. And I have a bad habit when my brain at right before I'm about to fall asleep, it's like, what if you just put in an AirPod and you could just listen to something for a while and then you'd quote unquote go to sleep. Which doesn't not gonna happen. really happen. Yeah, I happen. enter some quasi zombie state and then wake up in the morning. I'm like, what did I just listen to? Yep. I don't know, man. All right. Good stuff, guys. Zach is so over this podcast. I'm not over it. I I wish it could go on longer. I wish we could have started earlier. All that stuff. I really enjoyed this and I appreciate you, Carrie. Yeah, man. Carrie Robinson. Thanks for having me on, guys. Movement yeah, Church dude. OC. I just messed that up, didn't I? The Movement Church. Okay. Our website's theocmovement.com. Okay. Yeah. And then we're Bros, Babbles, and Beer. Energy. And <laughs> energy. energy. YouTube. Bros, Bibles, and Beer. YouTube.com slash Bros, Babbles, Beer. Leave a comment. You can find us, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff, Bros, Babbles, Beer. Um, good comments on the YouTubes and do it. I mean, question. We never got to the comments. Will right. you guys come and be on our podcast? Yeah. Anytime. I think man. that would be a dope collaboration. hundred percent. MC Unpacked. Are you ready? Bros Bible. Well, we will. Are me and Megan will sit on the opposite side of you guys. Oh, man. And we'll freaking rock and roll. Christians be on so one good. side, questionables on the other. And then we'll bring in Double D in. Maybe yeah. you can help out. That'd be awesome. Ooh, I like it. Yeah. 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 It'd so, be good. So hit us up, comment, and all that stuff, and we we love it, and we're getting them, and we'll read them next time. I we'll, promise. We'll feature them the next time. Yeah, yeah. My intuition was right. Yeah. Thanks for your engagement. You and, weren't gonna get to it. Uh, what I love about this, you got Dodgers, Angels, 
Padres. Padres. Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys. And they all suck. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Speak for yourselves, suckers. No, but it's a microcosm yeah. of like the this the sports fandom. Coming. We are still friends, and that's a stupid example. But literally, you just heard us disagree about some pretty heady stuff. And um, I think we're still friends. Still friends? Still friends? David, are we still friends? <laughs> David's nodding yes. David's affirmed us. He's off camera and off mic, and he's saying yes. We are still friends. <laughs> well, Grace, be serious, guys. For Carrie, Zach, Jeff, I'm Andy. Grace, be cheers. 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 There's nothing broke. It worked the whole time. Talk to me about dispensationalism again, Daddy. Not- <laughs> <laughs>